December. The U.S. government said North Korean hackers executed the attack in retaliation for the release of the comedy film The Interview, which poked fun at the country. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange said the leaked document should be in the public domain because of Sony's links to a number of government organizations. Assange said this archive shows the inner workings of an influential multinational corporation. It is newsworthy and at the center of a geopolitical conflict. It belongs in the public domain. WikiLeaks will ensure that it stays there. Sony Pictures condemned the move, saying that by publishing the documents, WikiLeaks is assisting cyber criminals. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day, she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports a Florida man who caused a major security scare after landing a small helicopter on the west lawn of the U.S. Capitol was charged with two criminal offenses on Thursday and then released pending trial. Douglas Mark Hughes, a U.S. Postal Service mail carrier, faces up to four years in prison on charges of unlawfully operating an unregistered aircraft and violating national defense airspace. Hughes was arrested Wednesday afternoon after he flew his gyrocopter over Washington and landed on the Capitol grounds. Aircraft are banned from flying in the area of the Capitol and the White House without permission. At the hearing in the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, Hughes was still dressed in his blue Postal Service jacket and used hearing aid headphones. Hughes told the Tampa Bay Times before his trip that he planned to deliver letters to members of Congress to draw attention to the need for campaign finance reform. Magistrate Judge Deborah Robinson said Hughes of Ruskin, Florida, was free to return to his home, but once he was there, he would be subject to home detention. He is also barred from operating any aircraft and must stay away from the U.S. Capitol and White House areas in Washington, surrender his expired passport, and report once a week to a pretrial office in Tampa. The U.S. government did not oppose his release, and Hughes is due back in Washington for a preliminary hearing on May 8th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. A prison rights group protests the treatment of supervillains in the nation's magnetic detainment cubes. A local dad thought he could make it out of a zoo without buying his kids light up shit. And a pigeon wishes just once it could complete a head movement smoothly. This is the Onion Week in Review. Millions of frustrated Americans across the country asked this week why the nation's struggling mental health system couldn't just get it together and stop feeling sorry for itself. Exasperated citizens told reporters that they had lost all patience with the ailing network's failure to perform basic tasks, such as routine mental health evaluations and emergency counseling. Look, I get it. Everyone goes through a rough patch. Just look at the education system. I know times are tough, but things are never going to improve unless the system decides it wants to get better. In other news, a new study finds that more men are opting to be in the room when their wife conceives their baby. An area man is unaware all of his friends think of him when they want to put things into perspective, and three dozen chemical and emotional responses are activated by the phrase pigs in a blanket. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You may join us here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio, you've got Ian. Danica. And Daryl. And don't forget, you can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we share with you there. Again, they are totally free. Those other talk show hosts, they like to charge you for their websites. Ours, we give it away. And you can go there and actually create the content uh, what it is you see there on the front page of the website was suggested, was put there by listeners like you, and then voted upon also by listeners like you. So go and get interactive over at freetalklive.com. The uh, toilet paper situation is getting difficult, more difficult apparently than it has been in Venezuela. It's a stinky situation. Uh, yeah, wonk, I imagine so. Wonk. It's uh, it's getting pretty difficult to acquire some of the most basics that we all take for granted in, in the Western world. And, you know, the reason for this arguably is, well, socialism. 
But you've got an update, Danica, Socialism and black markets. Well, the black markets are probably the ones providing the toilet paper. Um, but, you know, it's Based on what I had read when we discussed this before, people were taking the toilet paper out of Venezuela mm-hmm. to Colombia to where they could get more money in Colombia than what it cost for them to purchase the toilet paper in Venezuela. Okay, I hadn't heard that about the toilet paper. I'd heard that about like petroleum. They, they, they were smuggling oil. out oil and toilet paper. Okay, interesting. Yeah, and even in this article that I'm bringing today, there is a woman that even though she's struggling with getting toilet paper to her hotel, she doesn't want to purchase off the black market just based off principle. Well, and, I would have no problem. Oh, <laughs> buying neither from would the I. Black I just, you know, even though the, the black market exists, there are going to be those that you know choose not to do it yeah i understand that's I just mean, what it is to me if it's a question of do my customers have toilet paper or not right um i will choose yes and go with the black market toilet paper oh i totally agree yeah. i mean you've got a business to run you need to be able to have supplies to it but you know to each their i mean you know she can't run her hotel because she chooses not to get toilet paper i mean that's I, at the end it comes on her i could just imagine like walking down the street, some guy standing on a street corner with an oversized trench coat. <laughs> hey, buddy. Get your toilet paper. Yeah. You want to buy some toilet paper? I got two ply and I got three ply. It's like, <laughs> where'd you get three ply? Like, I can't even <laughs> find that in the grocery stores anywhere in the U.S. I know a guy. Does it exist? Three ply? I, I've heard that it does. Huh. I had never even heard of three ply, but hey. Learn something new every night. All right, so tell me the story, Danica. All What's right. happening there? Venezuela's product charges have become so severe that some hotels in that country are asking guests to bring their own toilet paper and soap. A local tourism industry spokesman said, "It's not Wednesday. a bad idea. I mean, it's uh, to sure. in, a, in a, not just in that country, but in other places uh, where toilet paper is in short supply." To bring your own is always a good idea. At least the very, at least in that case, you will not end up with the uncomfortable kind of dis, uh, difficult toilet paper. I guess you could say the rough stuff. The, well, the John Wayne toilet paper. Is that, I, I've never I, heard what's that. that. It's rough. It's tough. It don't take crap off nobody. It's John <laughs> Wayne toilet paper. Yeah, exactly. So bringing your own toilet paper into a place like that. And there are some countries where it's expected. And I don't know what they are off the top of my head, but I think there's some Asian countries. I know in in, uh, China, you have to pay to use the toilet paper because there's just there's too many people. Well, I shouldn't say too many, but there's so many people in that country and so many tourism that they can't keep up with the supply of Mm. toilet paper. So they have to start charging it in order to make sure they can have a consistent supply coming in. So how many squares do you get for like a quarter? I have no idea. That's a good question. <laughs> like, is it, you know, 25 cents per square? Oh, uh, well, it'd be yuan or yuan. I think that's that's the uh, Chinese yan? dollar. So yan, is it yan or you. yen? Yeah. How do you pronounce no, yen that? is uh, Japanese. Okay. It's Y-U-A-N. Yeah. And the conversion rate is, I think, like 13 U.S. cents for one yuan. Mm. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So, depending on where you're at, it could be cheaper, it could not be. So, they're advising customers, bring your own toilet paper. We highly suggest this. They, I imagine they're still trying their best to provide it within the hotel, but they know how short, in short supply it is, and so they're hoping their customers will sort of help them out. And it's getting even more complicated because they've got a busy holiday called Semana Santa or Holy Week coming up, so that makes for even... More tourists to come in and, mm-hmm. you know, the increasing the need for that. In Merida, a state in western Venezuela that's known for its same mountains and landscapes, small hotels are struggling to stock their rooms with basic supplies as the Holy Week Festival starts coming underway. Mm. It's an extreme situation, uh, says Zina Camacho, owner of a 20-room boutique hotel in the foothills of the Sierra, Sierra Nevada National Park. For over a year, we haven't had toilet paper, soap, any kind of milk, coffee, or sugar. So we have to tell wow. our guests to come prepared. I mean, we are just a room. We're not a hotel anymore. I mean, normally, you know, the idea behind a hotel is that you get taken care of. There are amenities. Right, exactly. Right now, we're do- we just have a roof. Here you go. You know, maybe have a, I'm, a bed. Maybe I'm you know naive in this. You, thinking you've got to that- bring your own bed. <laughs> That's what's next. Don't, oh, man. Your roll away bed. Yeah, maybe I'm you know, naive in thinking about this. I mean, when I go on a road trip, I definitely bring toilet paper. But if I'm flying to a country, I just... You don't thought, think about that, right? I don't think about yeah. that. And 
I couldn't imagine having to think, oh, hey, I better make sure I'm stocked up on toilet paper. Got to squeeze those two rolls into my already tiny suitcase. Sure. I wonder if the TSA has rules against too much toilet paper. <laughs> Could you imagine? Only if it's liquid or gel and it's over 3.5 ounces. There's another TSA agent, by the way, that is apparently speaking out. I've got uh, that story as well if we want to get to some more travel-related subjects. Uh, But you can share your thoughts. What countries have you been to that do not have toilet paper as just a standard issue thing that you find in the bathrooms in in that country? Um, I've heard that there are other countries. I'll have to, you know, maybe Google around and see if I can find out which ones they are. But it's just not common for people to not have their own toilet paper with them. So, you know, they the places of business aren't generally providing it. Yeah, the product shortages are hitting the smaller hotels, especially, says Geraldo Montella, the president of Merida's Tourism Chamber. He says that five hotels have said that they are going through the situation. They they keep asking their guests to bring their own toilet paper. He says, we're near the border with Colombia, just two and a half hours away, and lots of Venezuelans' goods are taken there because they sell for more money in Colombia, just like Daryl was saying. Hmm. He says, bigger hotels can take care of the product shortages by buying, buying toilet paper and other basic supplies from the black market smugglers who charge up to six times the regular price. Hmm. But smaller hotels just really can't afford that. So there's this crazy situation in Venezuela with the money there. And that is part of, if not the entire reason why there's this discrepancy in being able to go to Colombia and sell product there, whether it's toilet paper or gasoline. Uh, Because I've seen pictures of a guy, you know, basically holding two canisters of what appear to be very heavy canisters of gasoline, like on his shoulders, basically. Like Uh five gallon cans. Like walking across a swamp or a, or a creek or something like that, trying to smuggle them into Colombia. And what has happened is that there's uh, this crazy government mandated exchange rate on the money over there that essentially misvalues. You know, they've basically arbitrarily selected a certain rate. I think there's, I'll have to check and see what the current rate is. Last I heard, it was like six or seven to one. And the, that, that's what I'm thinking it is. And the black market rate has been as high as 150 uh, boliv- boulevards to one U.S. dollar. So it's just a crazy discrepancy that results in people doing things that usually wouldn't be economically feasible. Like, you know, to pack toilet paper across a border, you would think that just doesn't make any sense. Right. I, I, I've got a solution to the Venezuelan toilet paper problem. Print more money and use the money as toilet paper. <laughs> Worth we might be getting there, Daryl. <laughs> they're, they're, you know, they're almost too hyperinflation right now. Just yeah, use was, the dollars or use the boulevards. I remember the last time paper. we talked about this, inflation was at I think it was sixty-seven percent or something like mm-hmm. that, and that's a yearly rate. It's not like you know every day, but uh, we'll come back with more and talk about this. The toll-free number is eight fifty-five four fifty-free. The Foundation for Economic Education also has a story about this. Venezuela runs out of toilet paper. Comma, achieves true sh- uh, socialism. <laughs> so we'll get into that here. You can also share your thoughts. Maybe you've been in a situation like this where you had to bring your own toilet paper when traveling. Is it as uncommon as many in the West believe? Uh, 855-450-FREE. You can share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. More coming up. Attention business owners. Do you know the three most critical letters in business? CEO? MBA? Nope. Here's a hint. These three little letters can make the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. ROI? The answer is INC, as in incorporation. Because if you're not incorporated and someone sues your business, you can lose it all. Your home, your car, even your life savings. That's why Incorporate.com is now giving away a free incorporation guide to all business owners. So you can incorporate in just 10 minutes. Protect your home. Protect your car. Protect your life savings. Call 1-800-941-1029 for your free 10-minute incorporation guide from Incorporate.com. They don't provide legal or financial advice. They just make incorporating or forming an LLC quick and easy. Get the three little letters that can mean the difference between making a fortune and losing everything. For your free guide, call 1-800-941-1029. That's 1-800-941-1029. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. 
Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And join us online at freetalklive.com. Uh, you can also get on the air with us here via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. We're talking about the toilet paper crisis in Venezuela. I mean, if there was ever a crisis, the, the word crisis is used a lot, right? Like it's overused. You could easily argue that uh, people in the government uh, are constantly using, uh, this is a water crisis. This is a, you know, whatever. They always have some sort of crisis. This that, is a midlife crisis. Yeah. Well, I mean, not that probably wouldn't come from the government so much, but, uh, you know, they like to, to use the term crisis to describe pretty much anything they want you to think of in sort of a sense of urgency manner and then cede your authority to them to take care of it. <laughs> that is true. Um, but if there ever was a crisis, certainly, I guess water's pretty important, but toilet paper is up there, man. I mean, having toilet paper is one of the the niceties of modern life, and it's hard to really imagine what people will do without it. I imagine there are some Bidets. creative solutions. Bidets are pretty awesome. Yeah, I wonder how uh, how many of those are being installed right now in <laughs> Venezuela, and what that probably costs. not many because socialist country, you don't have the engineers that know how to install those, and you probably can't even find one anywhere in Venezuela to purchase, let alone to get installed, because socialism, and they will go for more on the black market in Colombia. The socialist-run country also has South America's highest murder rate and an archaic foreign exchange system that essentially forces tourists to carry big wads of U.S. dollars with them to avoid the expensive rates that are charged by the bank if they pay for things with credit cards or take money from an ATM. And I imagine that would be because the banks 
probably can't sell you money at the black market rates. Uh, Correct. They're likely forced to do it at the government's official exchange rates. So Correct. So it really doesn't do you any good to use the banks because right now what's happening in Venezuela, as I mentioned before, and I did pull up an article that's more recent because I had said that I'd heard 150% inflation, mm -hmm. uh, that it had gotten to that point within the You actually the last said year. 67% inflation. What did I say 150 about? Because I thought I had heard that. The 150... Uh, boulevards to a U.S. dollar is the black market oh, right. exchange rate on that. Well, right now, according to Bloomberg, Venezuela's inflation is seen as pushing 200%. Wow. Uh, let me tell you a little bit more about that, but also you can go to freedomsphoenix.com and it, you can uncover the secrets and expose the lies. I mean, they are providing their readers the detailed real news that lies between the lines of propaganda and the relationship we have with coercive governments. Freedomsphoenix.com offers up-to-the-minute updates on the economy, technology, communications, and the rise of the police state. So go to freedomsphoenix.com and sign up for their free daily dispatch. That's freedomsphoenix.com. The story from Bloomberg Venezuela, which already has the world's fastest inflation rate at a reported 69% in December, could see that rate more than double this year as it struggles to respond to falling oil prices. We may end up this year with inflation at close to 200%, says Alberto Ades, co-head of global economics research at Bank of America. He said that in an interview with Bloomberg Surveillance Friday. He forecasted the economy would shrink 4%, saying that Venezuela is in dire crisis. The 50% drop in oil prices in the past year has buffeted Venezuela's economy and forced it to reduce imports, exacerbating shortages of everything from shampoo to beef. On the black market, the boulevard has weakened 74% in the past year to about 257 boulevards per dollar, not 150, which I had heard previously. 257 per dollar is what you can get on the black market if you know the right people, compared to 6.3 boulevards per dollar as the official exchange rate. So what you have happening there, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong on this, I'm not an economist, but my understanding of what you have happening in this country is the government has said, we, d we say that these boulevards are worth this amount, and they've set this 6.3 to 1 ratio. But of course, the market says differently, and the market is actually responding to the fact that Oh, because you know the government essentially is not able to sell oil at what it used to be able to sell. They're not make bringing in as much uh, from that main export of the country anymore, and so all the while they're just sort of plugging their ears and shutting their you know cl clamping their eyes shut and you know pretending like nothing is changing here. That they can somehow with their magic uh, economic wand they can just uh, they can just cancel the effects of economics essentially just ignore them and you know put them aside and that they won't uh, supply and demand won't actually factor into the prices of things but they are and so you've got the black market saying well the government says it's worth uh, one one US dollar to every 6.3 uh, boulevards, but the black market says it's one US dollar for every 257 boulevards right now and that's just a crazy differ uh, you know distinction that is resulting in people not being able to buy things on the open marketplace because things that are sold openly have to be sold at the official exchange rate. You can't be seen selling product that isn't you know, based on the official exchange rate or else you'll be punished. So therefore, everything goes, or as much as possible, a business goes into the black marketplace. And of course, people don't want to get paid in boulevards. They want to get paid in dollars sure. and then exchange them on the black market through black market money exchanges because they'll get more for more boulevards per dollar if they can pull that off. It's crazy. I wonder if there's a market down in Venezuela for people using Bitcoin, and Good if question. so, how big is that market? That's worth looking into, if you don't mind. Uh, because no, yeah, go for it. Yeah, like if you if you're trying to buy Bitcoin through one of these exchanges, the exchange is going to be licensed. Yeah. So then, are you buying the Bitcoin based on that six bolivar to a one U.S. dollar rate? Or can you the buy the Bitcoin on the black market rate 
to where you get a little bit more bang for your buck. Imagine it's whoever's selling the Bitcoin. <laughs> right. But no, I'm saying if you're going through an exchange. Ah. Uh, right. Because, you know, it's not like here in Keene to where I can post on Facebook, I want to buy $50 worth of Bitcoin and have five people respond, I'll sell it to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know how widespread Bitcoin is down there. Maybe we should look into that, see what we can learn about it. The Central Bank of Venezuela, which typically releases inflation data each month, has yet to publish any information for this year. That's suspicious, wouldn't you say? Huh. Yes. Every month, normally they publish this data, yet now it's we're four months into the year and they haven't published it at all. That sounds super fishy. What do you think they have to hide? Maybe they've got an inflation rate above 50% per month. As if so, that would be hyperinflation. Is that right? If it's above 50? 50% per month. As Drubal Oliveros, well, so far it's uh, maybe at about, they're estimating it could hit 200% over the year uh, this year. Last year it went as high as 74% over the year. Actually. So there are three people on local Bitcoin Listed as buy Bitcoin online in Venezuela, all of them requesting national bank transfer. There's one, two, three, four, six people under sell and all of them listing national bank transfer. So I'm guessing they're using the official exchange rate. We will come back with more here in moments. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number, 855-450-3733. Maybe you've been down to Venezuela or you're down there right now and you've got some comments. We'd love to hear from you as well. This is Free Talk Live. More coming up. By now, you may have heard a bit about Bitcoins. But did you know Bitcoins are now over an $8.5 billion market? And did you know that over 65,000 businesses now accept Bitcoins? Listen, if you're already earning Bitcoins or trying to make money in the Bitcoin market, you've got to know BidBit.co. Why? Because BidBit.co is where you can easily receive Bitcoins by selling and auctioning off your own personal items or promote business products and services for Bitcoins. You heard right. Whether personal or business, you can now buy, sell, and auction auction your products and services quickly, easily, and securely for Bitcoin at BidBit.co, the first and only marketplace website to offer BidBit escrow, a proprietary technology which gives buyers and sellers security and peace of mind because all transactions are protected. Start today. It's free to join, free to post, free to auction, and free to bid at BidBit.co. Buy, sell, bid, or auction everything Bitcoin. That's www.bidbit.co. BidBit.co. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. Hey! That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. Every day you make investment decisions. When you do business with and hold U.S. dollars, you make an investment in the soundness of the moral philosophy and the potential longevity of the United States hegemony. People who claim a monopoly on violence around the world. If this is the investment that you want to make, please keep listening to LRN.FM. If not, stop using their currency. Use bitcoins. Get educated. We use coins.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. 
Uh, excuse me, is this where I get a license to start a new business? I wouldn't be hasty. You have to get a hmm? license to go out of business, too, you know. Oh, well, look, I've invented this little anti-gravity machine, see? Oh, is that why you're walking two inches above the floor? <laughs> oh, yes, it's it's very comfortable. Saves on shoe leather. Yeah, well, you have to fill out these forms and report to the Human Services Department of Manpower Orientation and register with the Fair Employment Practice Commission, just the Wage and Hour Division of the Employment Standards Administration, the State Sales and Income Tax Division, the Internal Revenue Service, look, and the I Social Security Administration of the Department of Health, Education, and Wealth. Fair and of course, OSHA. OSHA? I thought that was a little town in Wisconsin. You'll find out. Say, floating around like that could be dangerous. Have you checked with the Consumer Product Safety Commission? Well, not yet. Come you to think of it, you actually are flying, aren't you? Look, you need to go over to the Federal Aviation Administration and the Transportation... It's very hard to get anything done these days if you're in business, but Free Enterprise built this country. Think what could happen if we don't keep it free. A public service of this station and the Center for the Defense of Free Enterprise, Bellevue, Washington. We just can't have people floating about unregulated, you know. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. Joining you in the studio, it's Ian here. Danica. And Daryl. Venezuela continues to have economic difficulties, and basically it's not just because their number one import is at half its price compared to what it could have been you know, at some point during the last year. That's a factor. But another factor is that the government is pretending like that's not a factor. So the government has set their exchange rate officially uh, at far, far below what it would normally be in the regular marketplace. Don't you mean their number one export? Did I say import? I'm sorry. You yes, did. I did mean to say uh, I was export. Like, wow, if their imports are cheaper, that should be good for them. No, they want to import more toilet paper, but unfortunately, it's just not working out because of the uh, the economic situation there. I wonder if uh, we could mail them toilet paper. Mail them? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it probably would turn into money for people. I mean, if the because then they'll smuggle it out of the country and then get paid in dollars for it, presumably over in Colombia, where they can then bring those dollars back into the black market in Venezuela and collect up to 250 bolivars per U.S. dollar as compared to the 6.3 they would get if they walked into any bank in Venezuela and attempted to exchange a dollar for bolivars. Okay. Oh, so I've just got this brilliant get rich quick scheme oh boy so you sell a dollar on the black market Mm -hmm. you then take those boulevards to the bank and say i want u.s dollars and then you get a bunch more u.s dollars from the bank you go sell those on the black market there's got to be some way that that's not possible for people there must be maybe the banks are saying no we can't give you dollars maybe dollars yeah I'm, i i bet that that's something that they might come up yeah, with I, I don't think they're going to turn it that i don't think they're going to turn that around it's too <laughs> obvious daryl there's there's no way that could work <laughs> i just don't believe it u.s dollars bad go away <laughs> yeah well i mean the 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 venezuelan government the whoever it is who's it maduro i think who's mm-hmm. in charge yeah. over there since chavez croaked uh, Maduro has been blaming, as Chavez did, the U.S. government, of course, for all well, of the course. problems in the same way that uh, that the North Korean dictator blames the U.S. government for all of their problems as well. Now, look, the well, U.S. U.S. led embargoes on both countries yeah. aren't helping the situation. No doubt. Uh, no doubt. And, and some of the things North Korea's propaganda wing says about the U.S. are absolutely true, um, but some of them not so much. Right. So we'll continue the story here from Bloomberg.com, but we were discussing, and I want to talk more about the idea of Bitcoin down in Venezuela. What are people doing with Bitcoin? There's actually an article from Vice about that that Syphase sent over to the show, so maybe we'll share that. Ooh. And I don't know if you've dug up anything on the topic, Daryl. All I was able to find when I did a search for Bitcoin in Venezuela was the exchange rate of Bitcoin to Bolivars and the oh, local okay. Bitcoin where so, there was like what nine people that were either buying or selling and they want a national bank transfer. That's more than there was in Cameroon when I looked at that country on local Bitcoin. 
So if you want to get Bitcoin and you're in the U.S. or Canada, then you can visit ExpressCoin.com. They can hook you up with Bitcoin, Litecoin, as well as Dogecoin. They are a licensed money services business, and you can get your cryptocurrency with money order, check, or wire transfer. Just get started over at ExpressCoin.com, whether you're in the U.S. or Canada. That is ExpressCoin.com. You can also grab them from your smartphone by downloading their app at ExpressCoin.com. And if you use coupon code FTL, you'll get up to $40 worth of your cryptocurrency of choice with no fee whatsoever. ExpressCoin.com, coupon code FTL. So the central bank over in Venezuela has not published any information about their official inflation rates uh, yet this year. Normally, they release that inflation data every single month. Hmm. That's pretty suspicious. What do you think's happening there? Oh, I know what it is. Hmm. They don't have enough money to buy the paper to print the inflation report. <laughs> <laughs> it's strictly a political decision, says the director of the Caracas-based consultant Analytica said uh, Friday in an interview referring to the data delays. Quote, it's not like they've stopped calculating inflation. The director of the central bank knows what the rate is. Annual inflation could rise to as much as 150% in 2015 and climb as high as 250% if the central bank included factors currently being omitted in the official statistics. So much like here in the United States where there are certain economic indicators that the central bank, you know, the Federal Reserve just ignores in their calculations of uh, inflation, same thing's happening in Venezuela where they're leaving certain types of items out of figuring those numbers. Oh, yeah. In the U.S., they leave out taxes in the official inflation rate. Oh, meaning how much they pesky taxes. Meaning how much they're collecting or how much they've gone up. Right. So the tax rate that you're expected to pay, you know, they, they've got this number of, you know, like every man, woman, and child based on all of the taxes that are collected— Sales tax, property tax, this tax, that tax, income, social security, blah, blah, blah. Okay. None of those are tabulated when they're figuring out the expenses that they use to calculate the cost of inflation. Hmm. So yeah. if taxes go up drastically, then that's not counted in the inflation rate. And I forget what else they leave out, too. Is it is it food? I, I don't remember what. That there's certain food items that they do leave out. Mm -hmm. like I what, think preparing? fuel they leave out. Mm. Uh, okay. Some of the electronics, the way they do, is because those prices have dropped so much, they will replace it with an equally priced item that is of higher value. So, like, you know, laptops. Now you can get a laptop for a couple hundred dollars. Right. Well, when they started calculating this, a computer costs like $2,000. Hmm. So they will still try to find a computer worth about $2,000. I wonder why. I mean, wouldn't they want to include the lower-priced computers sure, in there yeah. because that would possibly contribute to a lower inflation number? But they don't want people to think that there's deflation on anything because huh. deflation is bad, so is inflation. Well, or at least that's what I was on, always told in school is yeah. deflation's bad, too. It depends on how you look at it, right? Like for a lot of people, uh, for savers, for instance, deflation could be a good thing. Right. Because then your money goes farther. Absolutely. But for people who are in debt, inflation is a good thing. So <laughs> if you are in debt on a on a house or something like that and the you know, the what money can buy, it you know, it is able to buy less and less with, but that meaning that the there are more dollars chasing the same number of goods, right. uh, you'd be able to pay off your loans quicker, in theory. I, I, I'm sure you've heard about the like missing depression from the 1870s. I don't know. To where, basically, it was a period of prosperity, but because the prosperity was increasing at a lot greater supply than the money rates were increasing, there was actually a period of deflation. Of deflation. So when economists are looking at this, they're like, wait a second, all of these prices were going down, but prosperity was going, how, how's that possible? But it was just a period of deflation with increased prosperity. Oliveros, who is the uh, director of the Ecoanalytica in Venezuela, says it's not that they're manipulating the numbers, it's that they're omitting certain factors that the central bank should include. Well, I would call that manipulating the numbers. 
If you're leaving certain factors out, knowing what having those factors in would do to the official numbers, that's to me by definition inflate or not inflating, but manipulation. Absolutely. Right. Well, they're they're not lying about what the things they're factoring in are providing, but they're they're also not factoring in everything that they should. Right. But let let me ask this question: How many different factors? Should one be providing? How many should they include? I have no idea. I'm if not an there's economist. something that one person thinks should be included, but somebody else says, I don't think that should be included, like how do you determine what right. gets included and, and what doesn't? You mentioned that, you know, food doesn't, or maybe some certain kinds of food don't There's there certain types of food. Why is not why is not all food included in it? Is, do they just only want to do groceries? Like, what kind of food do they leave out? I don't know off the top of my head. I will try seems, to find that, that out. That just seems really strange that they would only list some, but not all of it. Well, maybe somebody else can tell us more about that, like what stuff is being left out of these inflation calculations, both in the U.S. and in Venezuela. Mm-hmm. The toll-free number, because they just sort of gloss over that here in the story. Toll-free number, if you want to join us here, is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Plus, Bitcoins in Venezuela. What's happening in that world you can share your thoughts with us here. And by the way, the Bitcoin bus is back in Keene. We might be hearing from one of the uh, proprietors there here in a little bit tonight as well. It's Free Talk Live. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine freedom scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read chapter one at survivormax.com. Have you thought about owning gold? There are lots of reasons to own precious metals. A hedge against inflation. When the dollar tanks, metals go up. A barter currency. You can disempower the Fed by using real money. And no one knows the future. In an economic collapse, metals are likely to be a currency. Do as I've done for years. Buy your gold and silver and precious metals from Midas Resources through gold.freetalklive.com. That's gold.freetalklive.com. If the IRS has garnished your paycheck or seized money from your bank account, you need to get professional tax help now. Fast action is required to put a halt to these aggressive IRS collection tactics. You can count on the knowledgeable team of tax professionals at Wall & Associates. With over 30 years of experience, Wall & Associates has settled the tax problems of thousands of taxpayers for a small fraction of what they owed. For a free face-to-face consultation, call 1-800-425-4610 to put a wall between you and the IRS. 1-800-425-4610 or look for us on the web at wallandassociates.net. We solve tax problems. If you hire Walland Associates today, you'll never have to talk to the IRS again. To stop the levies and seizures today, take action now. Call Walland Associates at 1-800-425-4610. Wall and Associates. 1-800-425-4610. Based on actual cases, results may vary. Not a solicitation for legal services. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can dial in and bring up whatever's on your mind, especially if you've got some experience in Venezuela. We are once again on that topic because it's just absolutely fascinating and horrible to watch uh, these poor folks go through just absolute, uh, very uncomfortable shortages in products like toilet paper, some of the most basic products. Soap is also very hard to get a hold of, you know, like dish detergent, that kind of thing. Everyday house essentials. Chickens are hard to find Mm -hmm. um, because, well, there's a crazy exchange rate that is being manipulated by the government there of 6.3 bolivars per dollar. The actual exchange rate, which you can figure out by going into the black market and seeing what the ranges are of bolivars you'll get to uh, for one dollar, you could get as much as apparently 250 bolivars per dollar, depending on who you know, right? I mean, obviously, if you don't have good connections in the black market, you might only get 100 bolivars per dollar or whatever. But either way, it's going to be a lot more bolivars for a dollar on the black market than it would through any legitimate place, which is why nobody wants to legitimately sell their toilet paper uh, because they can get a whole lot more for it on the black market and or smuggle it over into uh, across the border into Colombia and then presumably get paid in dollars for for it there, which they can then bring back in uh, and turn that into more bolivars. So mm-hmm. there are ways for people who have access to dollars to do very, very well in Venezuela. But many of the people in Venezuela do not have that access uh, to those dollars. And so something we've been covering here over the, the last few years here on Free Talk Live, you're welcome to join us toll free at 855-450-FREE. Uh, I'm going to continue here with a little bit more, and then we'll talk more about Bitcoin in Venezuela, but a little bit more from the Bloomberg piece, uh, talking about the inflation rates to where some people are predicting that this year inflation could hit 200% over a year's time in Venezuela. Now, Daryl, you say that is not yet hyperinflation. It's bad, but it's, it's not bad. hyper. It's not hyperinflation. Uh, the definition that I was able to find said that hyperinflation is inflation of about 50% per month. Wow. It's hard to even envision what that must must be like to actually live underneath that. Yeah. So uh, more from the story in, here. I, I think it was Zimbabwe. The prices were doubling every three days during their hyperinflation. So people have to basically leave their jobs and run to the store to buy whatever they possibly could. Right. Before and and some, for the end of the day. in some cases, the prices would increase during their, uh, you know, At putting the stuff in yeah. the baskets. The price would increase, so they wouldn't be able to pay for everything that they had. Take stuff out when you get to the register. Take stuff out. Oh, and the price of this just went up. Venezuela, according to the story here, has responded. This at Bloomberg.com has responded to the falling oil prices by reducing imports, which dropped 18% in January compared with the same month last year, according to a Merrill Lynch Global report on April 7th. The bank said, quote, the Maduro administration is in the midst of undertaking one of the largest import adjustments to Ven- in Venezuelan history, adding that many of the country's economic problems are, quote, to a large extent, self-inflicted. Venezuela has received an average $45.21 per barrel for its exports so far this year, compared with 88.42 in 2014, according to the oil industry. The nation relies on oil for about 95 percent of its foreign currency earnings. Foreign reserves have fallen 15% in the past six weeks to $20.6 billion from a 2015 high of $24.2 billion. The Bank of America's experts said, quote, they still have assets to continue to pay their debt, but if you look at the first quarter, they are drawing down their assets very, very quickly. And, you know, besides all of those numbers, what really matters is the situation on the ground. And what you've got going on the ground in Venezuela, as of the last report I saw, 
was essentially the equivalent of bread lines. Now, I don't know how plentiful bread is there. We haven't heard much reporting on that. But as you pointed out, Danica, these basics like soap, chickens, you know, just some of the most basic. Fish. Yeah. Some of the most basic household staples you cannot find in one store. You have to, uh, from what we've read in the past, if you are going out shopping in Venezuela, you basically have to have your list and then you have to go from store to store in hopes of finding, oh, they have some detergent in stock. And oh. be prepared to spend a lot of time in lines, potentially. Exactly. The lines are going outside the store front Around doors. Around the corners. It's crazy. So you may spend hours just trying to get into Four one days. store. I, I believe that, too. You may yeah. spend, at the very least, hours trying to get into one store, only to find out that they only have one or two of the things on your shopping list. And then you have to go on to some other location, presuming you don't have a black market connection. And uh, and again, you uh, the idea behind going to these grocery stores is you would get the products at their government suggested prices, which are far below what they should be uh, in the in the black market. So there's a high incentive for people to want to spend that time. But obviously, your time is worth something. So at what point does it no longer become worth it to try to get the cheap toilet paper as opposed to going with the black market solutions? Well, here's how I look at it. As long as you've got old T-shirts that can be used <laughs> as rags oh. and you've got a shower with the flex head sort of thing, yeah. then you don't really need toilet paper if it means stand in a line for hours. Yeah, no doubt about that. I mean, the, uh, the shower head would be a, a good way to solve that problem. So uh, more here from the, the Venezuelan insanity. This story goes back to October of 2014, but it's because you'd asked the question, Daryl, what about Bitcoin? How, you know, how widespread, how useful is Bitcoin in this financial crisis? Because we know that, uh, was it Cyprus like two years ago now? It seems like it's been a little while since the Cyprus thing happened. That's been a couple years, yeah. Yeah, that there was this situation where the government robbed people's bank accounts in Cyprus, basically just came in and jacked, what was it, 40% or 50% or something like that? Uh, some outrageous amount. Yeah, so people in Cyprus were hustling to try to find other options for their money, and Bitcoin oh, yeah. became a big solution for those folks. And it's because you can acquire Bitcoin relatively affordably. You can acquire it in most places with internet access, at least. You can get Bitcoin. You don't have to ask anyone's permission. So you don't have to go through some kind of bank or some official government money exchanger. You can just go and buy Bitcoin from people. And so that's what happened. So what's happening in Venezuela, according to Vice News, is most of the world's economies run in accordance with the old Wu-Tang Clan mantra of C-R-E-A-M, or cash rules everything around me. The idea is pretty straightforward. If you have cash, you can buy things. If you don't, you can't. But in Venezuela, citizens can have buckets of bolivars, the national currency, and still find themselves unable to buy the sort of goods that many in the developed world take for granted. Currency controls imposed by the late Hugo Chavez in 2003 and maintained under his socialist successor, Nicolas Maduro, make it difficult for Venezuelans to exchange bolivars for U.S. dollars and other foreign currencies. So there you go, uh, Daryl. That's the answer to your question earlier, because you had said, well, you know, with this crazy exchange rate, why not just go into the bank and get the official 6.3 bolivars per dollar exchange rate. Give them 6.3 bolivars, get a dollar back, then go into the black market and turn that bolivar or the, turn that dollar rather into two up to 250 bolivars. And the reason you can't do that is because they won't do it, because there are uh, there are rules in place that make it difficult. They say so. What sort of hoops you would have to jump through to be able to accomplish something like that, and you know what sort of limits they might put on you, and how many cops might take an interest in your behavior? Who would be reporting you if you were doing yeah. that? It's a nice uh, idea, though. And here in the United States, they have a suspicious activity report that they fill out on you if you go into the bank and you do something that they don't like or something that uh, is repetitive, like creating a pattern of doing deposits or withdrawals of certain amounts above certain amounts. They'll fill out this what's going on. Or even if, you, money. Yeah. even if you have a pattern of putting deposits under their arbitrary amount. That's correct. And we read the story a while back about the restaurateur in, I believe it was Indiana, that you know she runs a cash restaurant, 
So a couple times a week, she would go deposit like five thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and IRS comes in, steals all her money and civil asset, whatever. Because and she kept putting in the same amount. Because well, it wasn't necessarily the same amount. But they were deposits under the ten thousand dollar limit. If it's over ten thousand, it right. has to be reported. So, but because she kept putting in deposits under that amount, that also that's suspicious. suspicious as well. Well, no, you're confusing a cash transaction report with a suspicious activity report. So, the cash transaction report is triggered at ten thousand dollars. Right. So, if you do what you're saying here is less than ten thousand, so if you do nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine, right. So she would go in a couple times a week. That yeah. way, she didn't have to do that ten thousand dollar report yeah. and. And that became suspicious activity. Correct. Yeah, that's all I was doing is just clarifying there are two types of reports. Yes. Suspicious activity report can be triggered by trying to avoid the cash transaction report and or just having a certain, you know, amount come in that looks suspicious, I guess, to the bank teller. Anything yeah. that, any, you know, if it looks suspicious, report it kind of thing. Everything is suspicious now. Depends on who you ask, I guess. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We'll talk more about what's happening with Bitcoin in Venezuela during this financial crisis that looks like it's not going to be letting up anytime soon. Uh, We'll come back with more here in moments on Free Talk Live. Hour 2's next. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. When the leading antihistamine and Nasacort go nose to nose, Nasacort wins, stopping more of the chemical responses that can cause your nasal allergy symptoms. And when you stop more causes, you get 24 hour relief from sneezing, an itchy runny nose, even congestion. It's prescription strength medicine available over the counter. Nasacort Allergy 24 hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Uses directed. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non-thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his Porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, April 17th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.41 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,205 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $225. Antiwar.com reports Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Martin Dempsey sought to downplay the impact of Russia removing a long-standing ban on selling S-300 defense missiles to Iran, saying the U.S. option to attack Iran remains intact. The S-300 was the cream of the crop of the 1980s Soviet long-range anti-aircraft system, something Iran has sought for years because of constant threats by both the U.S. and Israel to attack. The S-300 has never actually been used in combat anywhere 
there, but is still considered a high-end defense system. It should be noted that the Russian removal of the ban does not mean Iran will actually purchase the weapon or that delivery is imminent, as since losing the contract in 2010, Iran has developed some more elaborate internal defense systems. No air defense system is absolute at any rate, so General Dempsey is correct in that it doesn't prevent the U.S. from unilaterally attacking Iran if it wants, but it does increase the risk of losing one or more warplanes in such an attack. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports WikiLeaks on Thursday published thousands of emails and documents leaked after Sony Pictures was hacked last year, a move the film company has condemned. WikiLeaks announced it has published a searchable database of 30,287 documents and 173,132 emails from more than 2,200 email addresses from Sony Pictures Entertainment. The documents were leaked after hackers broke into Sony's server in December. The U.S. government said North Korean hackers executed the attack in retaliation for the release of the comedy film The Interview, which poked fun at the country. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange said the leaked documents should be in the public domain because of Sony's links to a number of government organizations. Assange said, This archive shows the inner workings of an influential multinational corporation. It is newsworthy and at the center of a geopolitical conflict. It belongs in the public domain. WikiLeaks will ensure that it stays there. Sony Pictures condemned the move, saying that by publishing the documents, WikiLeaks is assisting cyber criminals. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports a Florida man who caused a major security scare after landing a small helicopter on the west lawn of the U.S. Capitol was charged with two criminal offenses on Thursday and then released pending trial. Douglas Mark Hughes, a U.S. Postal Service mail carrier, faces up to four years in prison on charges of unlawfully operating an unregistered aircraft and violating national defense airspace. Hughes was arrested Wednesday afternoon after he flew his gyrocopter over Washington and landed on the Capitol grounds. Aircraft are banned from flying in the area of the Capitol and the White House without permission. At the hearing in the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, Hughes was still dressed in his Blue Postal Service jacket and used hearing aid headphones. Hughes told the Tampa Bay Times before his trip that he planned to deliver letters to members of Congress to draw attention to the need for campaign finance reform. Magistrate Judge Deborah Robinson said Hughes of Ruskin, Florida, was free to return to his home, but once he was there, he would be subject to home detention. He is also barred from operating any aircraft and must stay away from the U.S. Capitol and White House areas in Washington, surrender his expired passport, and report once a week to a pretrial office in Tampa. The U.S. government did not oppose his release, and Hughes is due back in Washington for a preliminary hearing on May 8th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The NFL announces a new zero-tolerance policy on videotape domestic violence. A puzzled nation can remember the name Ferguson, but is not sure from where. And a man wearing an M&M jacket is apparently made in God's image. This is The Onion Week in Review. Tech giant Apple unveiled a brief, fleeting moment of excitement to the general public. The short-lived, ephemeral sense of wonder was released in front of an exclusive group of reporters and industry insiders at Apple's Silicon Valley headquarters. Apple really made us wait but this rapidly diminishing glimmer of pleasure was totally worth it. It was 100% better than any other temporary joys I've ever experienced. And in this week's local news, an uneasy detente forms between a man sitting on a patio and a bee. In other news, a poll finds 80% of Americans would get in a 
vehicle with a stranger for a chance at a new life. Bank of America introduces a new $50 underdraft fee, and the nation's huggers announce plans for you to get over here. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can dial in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. And you can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features waiting for you there. It's all free over at freetalklive.com. Joining you in studio, it's Ian here. Danica. And Daryl. All right, we've been talking about Venezuela. They are once again continually having difficulty uh, because of the economic policies of the socialist government there. Certainly not making things better as their oil exports have halved in value over the last year. Uh, it's you know difficult times in Venezuela, but the government's making matters worse by forcing official exchange rate on its people, which is driving business into the black market, driving all sorts of business into the black market. Normally, here in the United States, when we think of the black market, maybe thoughts of uh, black market drugs or black market cigarettes or you know something that would you know be more traditional vice. I, I would count cigarettes as a drug. Yeah, that's true. Sure. Yeah. I, I just you know mention them separately because they're normally a legal market product, but you can purchase them in the black market in places like New York City, where you know cigarettes have risen to a legal price of over ten dollars a pack in many cases, sometimes as high as fifteen dollars per pack, from my understanding, and so therefore that provides a real incentive for black marketeers to come in and undercut the official prices, uh, get on the streets and sell Lucy's for a dollar or whatever. And so, yeah, when you think of the black market, you think of more traditional vice. You think of prostitution, gambling, drugs, uh, alcohol, the original prohibited uh, product in the United States, or one of them. And uh, you don't think of toilet paper when it comes to... Dish detergent. The black market. Or, yeah, the basic staples of life. But that is what you basically will have to go through in Venezuela if you want to acquire those things without standing in lines for... Hours upon hours upon days in Venezuela. So that's uh, part of what's happening there. And uh, the conversation we were having, two different conversations that I want to continue here in relation to that. One, Daryl, you've done some digging and you found uh, a more detailed list rather than our shoddy memories about uh, the core CPI, which is what? The core CPI does not include... Well, this is in the first, U.S. Right. In the U.S., the core CPI is what the Federal Reserve uses to calculate the official inflation rate. Which is usually, what, like 3% or something like that? Uh, 2 to 3%. Right. Whereas others who take into effect some of the things the core CPI doesn't take in right. will, will say it's 2 to it's two just like 10, the, 10 or 11%. The BLS, which is the Bureau of Labor Statistics, they have a second CPI number that does include food and energy. And I spoke partially incorrect earlier when I said I don't think it includes taxes. It includes taxes that directly affect the price of goods. So sales tax, excise tax, but it does not count real estate tax, fuel tax, or any other tax that would not, quote-unquote, directly affect the price. And the official number for March was released today by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. And for, quote, all items less food and energy rose 0.2% in March. And if you include food and energy, it rose, or rather it declined 0.1%. But they claim that the reason that they don't calculate food and energy in the regular CPI is mm-hmm. because, well, those prices are volatile. So we, we can't have a good calculation if we include these things that people actually buy all the time. Right. Vol- volatile as in they're more subject to inflation. Right, they're more subject to the the increase in the money supply. That they're more subject to market volatility. Mm-hmm. So it could be that there was a bad yield of a certain crop, so I that see. would affect the price. There could be an overabundance of a certain crop that would affect the price. Okay. 
I found something, and I, I realized that this is from the UK, but I was not able to find the basket from the US. I, I did find the basket from the UK. This is from a couple years ago, and I'm not going to read everything, but they do have where they mark whether or not this is a new item whether it's an item that is being dropped or if it's something that is replacing something. And this is from 2012, where in 2012 in the UK, a new item was added to their basket, hot oat cereal. They (laughs) added that to improve coverage of bread and cereals, which has been identified as being underrepresented. Uh, They also added pineapple to the list of fruits. They added books for teen fiction. They added chicken and chips that are takeaway. So I'm guessing you, you know, like to go food from a restaurant. Okay. They added baby wipes. They removed candy coated chocolate and replaced it with a bag of branded chocolate sweets Because candy-coated chocolates in the UK have become more difficult to find over recent years. They removed outdoor adventure boots and replaced them with walking-slash-hiking boots to better represent the sector of footwear fashion. And this is who in the UK? Uh, This is the official, whatever the government agency is in the UK that calculates inflation. And these are the changes they made in just one year? Over just one? Yes. Uh, They removed... Glass oven casserole dishes because they felt that uh, that area was overrepresented in the basket and the expenditure on this item has dropped. So basically, people are paying less for Tupperware dishes, so we're removing it from the list. Entirely. Wow. Because what if, and I, I don't know what the you know central bank of the UK's policy is. But if you read the mission of the Federal Reserve Bank in the U.S., one of the things is to maintain inflation at a constant rate. Not to prevent inflation, but to maintain inflation. Well, that's part of the what, Keynesian economics? Isn't that right? Yes. And the reason why they do that is the belief that inflating the money supply somehow benefits the economy. Yes, because there's more money for people to spend, so that's got to be good, right? No, because it results in a lot of cases in prices going up, so ultimately it doesn't Right, so then do we need more money so that you can spend it on those <laughs> we'll things, keep, Ian. We'll just keep printing out it, money well, to we'll, right. satisfy that. And, but what it does do is it benefits certain politically connected people. Sure. So the, yes. the people who get the money... First are the ones who benefit from it. So the people in the and even the people that get the money second sure, benefit. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, mm-hmm. the closer you are to the original recipient, the better off you'll be. Um, but we're not those people, right? And you're not those people, you the listener, unless you are somebody who knows the Federal Reserve folks and uh, you're the like the military industrial complex uh, and those folks. Or if you're one of the people that winds up getting money because you own farmland. Those people subsidies. benefit. Yeah, sure. people that get subsidies, they benefit greatly. Yeah, basically anybody sure. taking money from the government uh, firsthand like that, they, they're they the greatest beneficiaries of the inflationary policy. Everybody else basically gets hurt through the rising prices because usually pay does not keep up with inflation. Right. So no. what happens is the pay checks that people get stay relatively the same while the price of products goes up. So even though there's more dollars around You don't have as many as you used to, or you have as many as you used to, but they don't buy as much. Right. And so, therefore, your cost of living goes up, meaning that in order to have the same things that you had had previously, you have to spend more, which you don't have because your pay hasn't gone up. When, you know, your pay finally does go up a little bit, well, inflation's been happening the whole time. So, you're still behind the ball any way you slice it. And so, therefore, your life gets more difficult and you don't get to enjoy as many nice things or as many luxuries, as much free time because in order to have the same lifestyle that you had you then have to work more or find a better paying job which is difficult not necessarily always easy yeah right and 
you know, there, there was the uh, fight for 15 protest a couple days ago. Oh, yes, that's people, right. people, you know, we, we need $15 an hour. Did you see this, Danica? I've been hearing about it for a long time. And one reason labor unions are behind this is labor union contracts tie the salary to minimum, minimum wage, wage. Meaning yeah. that a labor union person would get four times minimum wage or something like right. that. So it would be a raise for them, too. Eight, a big race. 855-450-FREE. 855-450-3733. We will continue with more on Venezuela and what's happening with Bitcoin down there. That's still to come on Free Talk Live. Ooh, get the stinky dog away from me. PD stopped eating. All his hair fell out. Mounds and mounds of fur. Our hairballs have hairballs. Bad breath and bad gas. Chew himself raw. Sticky, gooey, smelly. She scratched incessantly. At least $5,000 in vet bill. And all it took was one container of Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Adding Dynavite to their diet has every single dog in my kennel looking better than they have ever looked. The shedding is stopped and the itching is stopped. Tons of energy, no more bad smell. She has gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. My vet was completely blown away. Dynavite's the bomb. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot oh. com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to to do though is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com. 101reasonsfilm.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm.
This is Free Talk Live. We're back with more. You can dial in toll-free. Join us here if you'd like at 855-450-FREE. Join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Joining you in studio, it's Ian here. Danica. And Daryl. Talking about Venezuela, uh, toilet paper, and other basics. The staples of modern life are not so staply down there in Venezuela. It's getting very difficult to find these products. If you can find them in the store, you'll get a decent price. But they have cops standing around guarding the stores. There are fights in the store lines. There are lines that are going around the block in some cases. You will wait for hours only to find out that they don't have what you were hoping that they had. Or they only had one or two things that you were hoping that they had. And then you have to go somewhere else and then wait and wait and then try the whole process all over again. Now, there's a black market that's uh, developed, and we'll talk more about that here in a moment. Because what's Bitcoin doing? How is Bitcoin factoring in to the situation on the ground there in Venezuela? Vice News has a report on that. Uh, but, you know, these days, at least in the developed areas of the world that we're used to, uh, we're constantly using power on our electronic devices, like smartphones and laptops. Uh, these are things that it's easy to crank through a battery on before the morning's even out. If you're using your smartphone in any kind of a heavy manner, you're not going to make it through the day without finding some way to charge back up. So turn to the Pocket Power Plus. Whatever your situation, uh, if you need to run your electronic devices for hours or even days, if necessary, the Pocket Power Plus can help you. It's a source of backup power so small, you really can put it in your pocket. You can also keep it in your purse or briefcase, glove box in the car. In fact, it's so powerful that in some circumstances, it can actually jumpstart a car. So the Pocket Power Plus can deliver an enormous supply of on-demand power and has a full accessory pack with most of the adapters you could need, including jumper cables. So listeners of Free Talk Live, you can now get the, po uh, the Pocket Power Plus for half price by going to pocketpowerplus9.com. And of course, you can use code FTL to save even more, pocketpowerplus9.com. Again, that's pocketpowerplus9.com. We're talking about the economic situation in Venezuela. It's making life very difficult. And really, it's all thanks to the government there. They're the ones who've set this insane exchange rate, this mandatory exchange rate that has driven all business essentially underground uh, in Venezuela. And so Bitcoin, you asked the question, Daryl, what about Bitcoin? How is that playing into this? In Venezuela, you can have buckets of bolivars, which is the national currency. However, it will still be difficult for you to even find to buy the goods that uh, you might be taking for granted, like toilet paper. Currency controls imposed in 2003 and maintained under the current uh, dictator there, Nicolas Maduro. I mean, he's elected, but come on. Uh, make elected it, yeah. in a shoddy election. There, there actually were two candidates on the ballot, but, you know, elected in air quotes. Make it difficult for Venezuelans to exchange bolivars for U.S. dollars and other foreign currencies. You are limited, if you're in Venezuela, to just $300 for online purchases per year, a minuscule amount in a country that has to import almost everything. Hard currency is so scarce, dollars trade on the street for many times the official exchange rate. Meanwhile, the country's runaway inflation reached an annual uh, rate of 63.4% last month. Now, this was written in October. Now, we have a, had a news story we read last hour saying that this year it could hit 200% yeah. in a year. This has driven an increasing number of Venezuelans to the freedom offered by Bitcoin, a virtual currency, which our listeners are many of them well familiar with. It's outside of the control of any state or government. It's based on the properties of mathematics rather than relying on physical properties like gold or silver or trust in central governments. Bitcoins can be earned as payment for goods or services purchased at an online Bitcoin exchange or accumulated by miners who process transactions and secure the currency's network using special hardware and software in exchange for Bitcoins. Venezuelan access to Bitcoins has been liberated with the launch of the first ever Venezuelan Bitcoin exchange marketplace, Sur Bitcoin. And uh, if you want, Daryl, I would like to know if Sur Bitcoin is still around. S U R. B-I-T-C-O-I-N, Sur Bitcoin, which opened at 12 a.m. on Tuesday. Again, this is in October. 
according to the founder, Kevin Charles. Sur Bitcoin was expected to open last week, said Charles, but various issues held up the launch. Users are now able to exchange bolivars for Bitcoins on the site and skirt around government currency restrictions in the process. The value of Bitcoin has been very volatile over the past year, though it's more stable than the bolivar and is rooted in the principles of supply and demand. So again, yeah. with Bitcoin, it's the market price every time. Whatever it is, you know, whether it's being priced in dollars or bolivars or whatever, it's the market deciding the price based on people doing thousands of exchanges on various different Bitcoin exchange websites across the world. And many are going to convert in the Bitcoin immediately into dollars in most cases, too. Many so um, people that do receive the Bitcoin. Well, I mean, in, in Venezuela, it would be more difficult to do that, right? Because dollars are at a uh, at a premium. Um, and I don't know uh, how easy that would be. I found another article written about the same time as the Vice one. This one was also written by Reuters. They probably pulled some from Vice. Vice probably pulled from it about the same time in October, mm -hmm. uh, where it says, uh, based by Kevin Charles, that many of uh, the users that would be receiving Bitcoin would be just converting it straight back to dollars because dollars would probably go more places. I mean, Bitcoin is taking off there for sure, according to this article, but dollars would still carry a lot more weight. So, I see what you're saying. Yeah. So because they can't get the Bitcoin, excuse me, because they can't get dollars through the official channels, they would use Bitcoin as their intermediary to purchase dollars I, and then presumably absolutely. spend those dollars on things yeah, in absolutely. the black market. So Sewer Bitcoin is still up and running. SewerBitcoin.com. Oh, cool. I am looking at the market right now. El and primer mercado de Bitcoin de Venezuela, which is the premier market in Bitcoin. The bid price is 70,010 uh, Bolivar. The ask price is 70,990 Bolivar. Now, that's that's market price. That's not the government official price, because if it was the government official price, we figured out earlier that it would be like 1,400. Yeah, 1,400. So that's a huge discre wow. discrepancy. And it's amazing that they haven't been targeted by uh, the, the government there in Venezuela. I'm well, they might have been targeted, but the website is still functional. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm presuming that the website is not located in Venezuela. That would sure. be, be <laughs> my not. guess on that one. Uh, so back to the story here from Vice. It is more stable. The, that is, the Bitcoin is more stable than the Bolivar, and it's rooted in the principles of supply and demand. To safeguard against inflation, only 21 million Bitcoins will ever be in, uh, available. Around 13 million, roughly $4.9 billion worth, are in circulation. The exchange rate on Monday was about $380 for one Bitcoin. Now, again, we're talking about this is a very old article here at this point. So. Mm -hmm. Right now, Bitcoin is worth about $220 U.S., and so when you do those conversions, Daryl, on those 70,000 numbers that you gave us, that works out to about 350 U.S. dollars worth, uh, meaning that that's what someone is offering to pay for uh, Bitcoin. So they're willing to pay about 50% more to get Bitcoin in Venezuela. Mm -hmm. Well, and something that I've noticed looking at the Bitcoin prices, all of the markets are independent of one another. So the mm -hmm. price that people are paying in Europe is not in any way connected to the price people pay in the U.S. Right. That's one of the reasons why they have things like averagers, like so BitcoinAverage.com. Yeah. They take different market prices into effect. 855-450-FREEZE, the toll-free number here tonight. You can join us on the air here, talk about Bitcoin or whatever's on your mind. Free Talk Live. For health and vitality for you, your family, and friends, get the Healthy Start Pack from Longevity, as recommended by registered pharmacist Ben Fuchs. If you're a junk food junkie, getting on the Healthy Start Pack is one of the best ways to wean yourself off of processed snack foods and start putting good nutrition in your body. If you have a loved one who's dealing with heart disease or any health challenge, the Healthy Start Pack makes a great gift. If you have a grandparent or a parent in a nursing home, you will be amazed at the difference a once-a-day dose of the Healthy Start Pack will make in your loved one's energy levels, in their memory, in their mood, and in their general outlook on life. Give the gift of optimal health to your loved ones and order the Healthy Start Pack from Longevity by calling 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470. Or on the web at brightsidebed.com. That's brightsidebed.com. Order today. 
If you're David, a few well-chosen words can help level the playing field with Goliath. I'm Holland Cook from SurvivalSpeech.com. Recently, I saw a Yellow Pages ad for an appliance repair company, and the headline read, Why Wait for Sears? If you're going to the Yellow Pages, the Dead Sea Scrolls of Advertising, you're ready to buy right now. So this is an attention-grabbing message. And how about the plumber whose radio ad says, Call by noon Thursday, and we'll be there Saturday at no extra cost. Smart guy. Most plumbing firms give their crew the weekend off. This one gives them Sunday and Monday off. In the words of a respected advertising executive, cut to the chase, make it quick, and tell me exactly what you can do for me, especially if you're looking for work. For more tips on critical communication skills for the way things are now, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. Ross Ulbricht was convicted in early 2015 of running the infamous Silk Road underground market. The Silk Road was a gift to humanity and helped reduce the harms brought on by drug prohibition. For this good deed, Ross may be spending the rest of his life in prison. His family is planning to appeal his conviction, but they need your support. Please visit freeross.org, where you can contribute via various methods, including Bitcoin. Ross needs your help now more than ever. Visit freeross.org. That's freeross.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. There's been all kinds of immigrants coming from all kinds of places, living in little enclaves, speaking their native tongue. Their kids, they learn English, and then their kids, they all don't even know their native tongue. Right, right. 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 So right. see, Trish, what's going to happen? What he's explaining to you, Trish, is that this is a natural process. When you let people come here, they naturally want to learn English. Kind of law breaking to put our lives Wait, in danger. Wait, what law breaking are you talking about, Trish? Sir, do you understand? What law breaking are you? People can't to, leave their dogs out because these people will eat them. <laughs> you are outrageous. We, we forgot the part. It was it was just lepers, and now it's murdering, raping, dog, dog eating, eating lepers. lepers. Amazing. I don't even. I mean, what else can you say I mean, to this? It's, it's just I, I, th- this is outrageous. Sure Trish, you, you are putting the J in jingoist. Free Talk Live seven nights a week from seven to ten Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Tienes Bitcoin? 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. Tienes means, do you have? Ah. Uh. Do you have Bitcoin? Uh, If you don't, you should probably get some because it's probably the most exciting currency in the world right now. No, that would be Dogecoin. I don't think so. I'm (laughs) sorry. I I mean, yeah, we mentioned it in our Express Coin reads every night, but I don't hear about Dogecoin anymore. No, I don't either. (laughs) You remember when Dogecoin kind of hit the scene? It was this cool, hip, funny kind of thing. Uh, Doge being an internet meme of this dog that, what is it, a Shiba Inu? A Shiba Inu, yeah. And it's an internet meme that got turned into a cryptocurrency, and it was sort of a joke, but at the same time, people took it seriously. They actually bought, uh, I believe it was a race car sponsorship. They, they, yeah, bought a race car sponsorship. They paid for the Jamaican bobsled team to go to <laughs> the most recent Olympics. But All yeah, it's a big giant with, joke. Yeah, All it's faci- a big giant joke. Facilitated with Dogecoin. It's still there. You can still go on the Bitcoin exchanges and... You know, these old so coins. coin, very crypto. You can wow. get a Doge. You can use Doge on shapeshift.io, which mm-hmm. means that if you've got a bunch of Doge shitting, uh, sitting around, uh, you can exchange mm-hmm. the uh, Doge into whatever currency that you would like. You can shapeshift that. There you go. At shapeshift.io. In fact, if you go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com, you can contribute to Free Talk Live's Bitcoin tip jar with Doge, as well as a bunch of other cryptocurrencies, something like two dozen of those. Did you get that in, uh, integrated onto fpp.cc? Uh, I have it partially integrated. 
I do have a bounty up on Bounty Source. Uh, I, I forget if it's .com or .org, but you know, if you look for Bounty Source, I've got a bounty up to where I'm looking for an actual plugin that I can put into the WooCommerce that would make it easy to use Shapeshift hmm. to accept the payments. Right now, I just have a notation of if you wish to pay with altcoins, download this browser plugin. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's kind of difficult, telling people, oh, you've got to download this browser plugin yeah. before you can use this. Still, though, it's a pretty so cool So I've got it partially adopted. So we're talking about Bitcoin, because the altcoins, you know, they're nice and everything, but there's hundreds of those, and really most of them are a joke. But Bitcoins are the real deal, and more and more businesses around the world are accepting them, and they're helping people. Helping people in tough parts of the world to make a better life for themselves, like in Venezuela, where people are using bitcoins to get around the government rules about currency and how much, uh, how many dollars someone can have, or can they even acquire dollars at all through the official channels? Generally, the answer is no. There are some serious restrictions that have been put on that. So now Sur Bitcoin is available over at surbitcoin.com. It is the first, uh, the premier exchange over in Venezuela to help people acquire bitcoins and or sell uh, bitcoins as well. And so, Bitcoin and the the reason that people in Venezuela are starting, or at least some people are starting to adopt Bitcoin, is because the currency is in such bad shape. Yes, and they've got the Bolivar. And Danica, you had mentioned that you thought it was odd that the Bolivar has been around since January of 2008. And that's actually when the Bolivar was revaluated to a ratio of 1 to 1,000 and renamed Bolivar Fuerte, which means the strong Bolivar. The strong Bolivar. Oh, my God. Wait a minute. 1 to 1,000, meaning that one yes. Bolivar Fuerte is the equivalent of 1,000 Bolivar? Yes, from before 2008. Can you explain what that means and why that's really relevant, what you just said? Because yes. that's, pretty, that's a pretty important thing, and I don't know if it necessarily makes sense on a, on a first pass to somebody okay. who's not familiar. So in, let, let me use Zimbabwe as an example, because yep. they had the hyperinflation. They had that $100 trillion bill which was what? the highest denominated bill that has <laughs> ever been made ever in the history of humans. Mm. And they finally, you know, they, okay, we're closing down the central bank because inflation's out of control. And about a year and a half later, they revalued their currency to a rate of, I, I think it was 100 trillion to one. Meaning that the hundred trillion dollar bill that people had, where they used to have, you know, like pocketfuls and buckets full of that to go mm -hmm. to the grocery store and hope that they could buy groceries, that was no longer worth one hundred trillion dollars. That was worth one dollar. So what they this did is a trick that the central bank can play. Right. It's called revaluating the currency. Yeah. And they did that in Venezuela in late 2007. It took effect January 1st, 2008. So just to be clear, to that where was a after? 1,000 Bolivar bill would then be worth one dollar. Hold on. So in in Zimbabwe, when they revalued, was that after they shut down the central bank? Yes. It was about a year after they shut the printing presses off. So who was issuing the new uh, currency at that time? I don't think they actually started issuing new currency until well after. They just said, okay, drop all of the zeros, and that $100 trillion mm. is now $1. Okay, because I was, I was expecting there would have to be someone to exchange that, right? Like some sort of bank teller who you would go to, hand them the that They have dollars. probably since implemented that, yeah. but at the time it was just, this is now $1. So. What you're saying is, in Venezuela, they did the same thing in 08, the beginning of, yes. of 08. They said, well, because they were probably having problems with inflation prior to that, too. We, yes. We just weren't following it back then on Free Talk Live. This is an interesting news to me. I Exchange heard controls were adopted in February of 2003. Right. Yeah, that's one, the, one of the other stories here mentioned that it was uh, Chavez who adopted those controls. But obviously, those controls didn't keep things under control. Right. And 
So, something that's interesting, just to sort of back <laughs> up a little bit further, the Wikipedia article that I'm looking at says until February of 1983, the Bolivar had the region's most stable and internationally accepted currency. Until 2003? No, until 1983. Oh, 83, I'm sorry. And so it was after 83 when they had some sort of... Uh, you know, socialist revolution. <laughs> like high devaluation <laughs> and something else. And oh, all right, man. currency is out of control. Uh, we're implementing all these socialist policies to rein in the problems. And but it's just made it more problems. And now here and we then are. in 2008, they issued a decree saying that for every 1,000 Bolivar you have, you can now have one Bolivar Fuerte. Yes, the strong Bolivar. Oh, man. (laughs) They're worth 1,000 old Bolivars, and of course it's just some bureaucrats deciding these things, right? It's just, it shows the arbitrariness of the government monetary systems. Yes. That some bureaucrats sitting around a board table just decided one day, you know, to, uh, to make this change as though it were going to somehow shore up the economy or shore up people's belief in the boulevard. And I imagine the people of Venezuela were not fooled by this because it's just so obvious what's happening there. Back to the story here from Vice News about the Bitcoin economy down in Venezuela. Again, this story from uh, October of 2014. So Venezuela's currency controls were implemented, they say, because of massive private capital flight in 2003. The country's foreign currency reserves took a huge hit and the government began restricting exchanges. Since then, the only legal method for Venezuelans to get U.S. dollars, here you go, Daryl, is through a government agency. So you cannot go to any old bank and exchange boulevards for dollars. For instance, if you want to travel abroad, you have an annual max quota of of uh, 2500 US dollars per citizen. A prominent Venezuelan business professor and Bitcoin booster who asked he not be identified out of concern he could face harassment at home. But the currency controls are complicated by the fact that Venezuela imports between 85% and 90% of the goods consumed in the country. Quote, the current economic situation has increased the need for dollars to import the things that have shortages. That's because the people who are going to sell you a pallet full of toilet paper, they don't want your bolivars. No. What good are a bunch of Venezuelan bolivar fuertes on the international marketplace? The Apparently US- 6.3 bolivars to a dollar. Yeah, it's, it would be a joke. It would be insane to accept bolivars for your international shipments. So they want dollars, but the people in Venezuela can't get dollars from the government or from anywhere, ultimately. It's Free Talk Live. We'll talk more about it. Coming up. The results are in. For the treatment of nasal allergy symptoms, nothing is more effective than Nasacort. Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour is prescription-strength medicine that's sent in alcohol-free with no harsh taste. It's not addictive and provides 24-hour relief on the worst nasal allergy symptoms, including congestion, with no prescription needed. And in a recent clinical study with Nasacort going nose-to-nose with Flonase, more people prefer Nasacort. For more information, visit Nasacort.com. Nasacort. Uses directed. Here's a good idea. When you have a legal matter like creating your will or legally setting up a business with a corporation or LLC, you don't necessarily need a law firm. Use LegalZoom.com. At LegalZoom.com, you answer straightforward questions online, and they take care of the rest. They even review your answers for common mistakes and guarantee your satisfaction. Free Talk Live listeners, you'll get 10% off your order by typing in FTL in the referral box at purchase. Don't procrastinate with these important legal documents. LegalZoom.com. Attention taxpayers, if you've received a notice from the IRS or state, do not ignore it. It's also a big mistake to try and handle your tax problem on your own. If you owe back taxes, it's a fact that the government has the power to take everything you own, including your home, business, wages, savings, and your freedom. But here's the good news. There's a special toll-free tax hotline set up especially for you. This tax hotline will tell you about new programs that are geared to help you dramatically settle, reduce, or eliminate what you owe. But you have to call now. Take down this number or put it in your cell phone. But call 877-345-7645. That's 877-345-7645. 
345-7645. When you call, you get free information on how you can reduce or eliminate back taxes, including penalties and interest. You can also be helped if you have unfiled returns, a tax lien, wage garnishment, bank levy, or if you have been entered into a payment plan but can't make the payments. Don't make the big mistake in thinking you can ignore or handle your tax problem on your own. You can stop the collection process immediately at 1-877-345-7645. That's 1-877-345-7645. 1-877-345-7645. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. LRN.FM needs your help getting our satellite signal back on in Africa. Our satellite provider had us on at no charge from 2012 through February of this year when they pulled the channel off the air. Now we're trying to raise $22,000 to continue reaching people with the message of liberty in places where it's needed most. Please visit our Indiegogo fundraiser at africa.lrn.fm. Give what you can and share the link with your friends. africa.lrn.fm. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Welcome back to Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Don't forget, you can join us online anytime you want over at freetalklive.com. And if you like the show and you like what we're doing here, then please support Free Talk Live by becoming a Free Talk Live amplifier over at amp.freetalklive.com. It costs you $5 a month. We will take that money in and invest it into Free Talk Live, getting on more radio stations around the country and bringing new internet listeners on board as well, as well as satellite listeners. So you can help us expand Free Talk Live by uh, and get yourself some perks like access to the Amp Only call-in lines, the Amp Only podcast, Amp Only forum, Facebook group. Go get the details, get signed up, amp.freetalklive.com. It's 5 bucks a month with any major credit card or Visa or MasterCard right on our website. But if you want to use other credit cards, you can do those through PayPal, amp.freetalklive.com. And coming soon, or later... At some point, coming at some point to the AMP program, we will begin accepting Bitcoin payments uh, through the Coinbase subscription service that they have, which is very, very cool. Um, But I don't know when that's going to happen, so I probably shouldn't really be teasing it that much because then people might get excited and it might not be like months until that happens. So sorry about that. Sometime possibly before the end of the year. I think that's realistic. I don't think that's going out on a limb really very much. Not saying which year. (laughs) (laughs) So, but before the end of it, Vice News, which does some of the best reporting out there on the internet, as far as I'm concerned, I just love Vice and the product that they they make. Yeah, you know they're a little lefty leaning in some of their editorial viewpoints, but so what? Everybody's got their their opinion, and Vice is uh, is uh, they're masters at putting together an interesting presentation on uh, a variety of different subjects. Oh, before you get into that, I looked up some info on the Zimbabwe dollar. Yeah, sure. And that has been suspended indefinitely. That happened April 2009. What has been suspended? The, do- the Zimbabwe like dollar the itself? Like the issuance of I see. 
has been suspended. They just did the revaluation, and they have never started printing new stuff. Interesting. Are uh, I, I have I heard that U.S. dollars are very popular down there? In the uh, according to the wiki article footnote, it says the euro, U.S. dollar. The British pound sterling, the South African rand, hmm. and the Botswana pula are used as legal tender. Basically anything they can get their hands the on. The U.S. dollar has been adopted as the official currency for all government transactions. Interesting. Interesting. They're not the only country like that either. Uh, since the only, let's see here, legal method for Venezuelans is from Vice News. It's about Bitcoin and Venezuela, which is in terrible economic condition. Uh, to get U.S. dollars is through a government agency. The currency controls are complicated by the fact that Venezuela imports between 85 and 90 percent of the goods consumed by the country. Randy Brito, founder of Bitcoin Venezuela, a blog that supports Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, told Vice News, quote, The current economic situation has increased the need for dollars to import the things that have shortages, but there aren't enough goods offered in the black market, so the price has increased exponentially in the last months. To secure those imports, people often need dollars, which are held by the government. If you can persuade the government that you're importing necessities like food or medicine, the exchange rate is 6.3 bolivars to $1, the Venezuelan business professor said. For less necessary goods, the government will exchange 11 bolivars per $1 in an auction-type process, but that doesn't cover all goods. The government recently introduced a third and less favorable category of exchange, the closest the government will get to the actual rate in which the government will change around 50 bolivars for $1. So the government itself has different exchange rates based on the products that you're interested in importing into the country. Or oh, how well you can bribe them, it sounds. Exactly. Because the government runs these exchanges, it reserves the right to reject any request for changing money as it sees fit. People then turn to the black market. The business professor said that the black market exchange rate was 100 bolivars per $1 as of last week. Remember, this is an old article. This is from October. They're now able to get up to 250 bolivars per U.S. dollar. Huge difference there. These problems have left people desperate for other monetary options. And since Venezuelans are hard-pressed to convert their bolivars into dollars, they are increasingly interested in... In converting bolivars into Bitcoin. Brito noticed that while it's difficult to use Bitcoin for purchases within Venezuela, the currency can be used to acquire more dollars than would otherwise be possible. And that's what you were saying mm -hmm. earlier, Danica. Uh, according to the story here at Vice, quote, when you want to send money abroad or you want to pay online, what really matters is the price of Bitcoin within a 10-minute window, said the business professor. It offers a way to buy stuff online without being restricted to $300 per year per citizen. So yet another way for the Venezuelan individuals to get around the government currency controls. And again, they have to import almost everything down there. So having that $300 rule preventing them from going over that amount per year is an incredibly crippling, crippling rule. Absolutely. Yeah. $300? Yeah, that's nothing. I mean, you that's... can spend $300 at one trip to Amazon. Yeah. Uh Ivan Montilla, a Venezuelan entrepreneur who gives presentations about virtual currencies across the country, told Vice News that Bitcoin adoption in Venezuela has been slow to this point because trading precious dollars for Bitcoins isn't palatable to many in the country. He says what happens is that one Bitcoin is so expensive for us that its adoption has been slow, despite the effective awareness in social networks. The price of Bitcoin exceeds the annual quota of dollars for our use on the Internet, so people prefer to use their dollars on Amazon than for Bitcoins. Now that SurBitcoin allows users to trade their bolivars for Bitcoins rather than dollars, it will be interesting to see how quickly the cryptocurrency takes root in a country whose monetary policy has been so poorly managed and whether the government, which has avoided any stance on Bitcoin, will be forced to respond. And this was written back in October. It was the best piece that we were able to find, and it was thanks to SciFace for sending that along uh, to me. Mm -hmm. So I'm interested to know... Now that it has been approximately six months since this article was written, has there been an increase in the adoption of Bitcoin? Um, you know, how busy is Sur Bitcoin? Are they uh, busier now than previously? And you know, how are people integrating Bitcoin into their lives in Bitcoin or in uh, Venezuela? I think all of those questions would be very interesting if we could get answers. 
if that's out there. You're welcome to share your thoughts with us here toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And of course, another reason that Bitcoin is so useful is because you can send it and receive it without having to go through official channels. So the people who are buying Bitcoin with Bolivar are basically doing it off the radar of the governments. And if they want to send that Bitcoin over to someone outside of the country for some reason or send it even within the country, the government would have not necessarily no clue about that. And taking currency exchanges out of the hands of the state is an incredible blow to the power system that they have over people. You can share your thoughts with us here toll free 855 450 free there's there's always a little bit more to say here there's a story from earlier this year about Venezuela applying what they call a double standard to a bolivar exchange rate Venezuela has revamped its tough currency controls only importers of priority goods like food and medicine will be able to buy dollars at the official rate of 6.3 bolivars and everyone else will need to pay double which is what the ice story touched on, but oh it became, I guess, official earlier. Oh wait, excuse me, that's January of 2014. So that uh, that that different tiered rate system went into effect over a year ago. Uh, based on things that I was reading, they've had a two tiered system. Mm -hmm. They just increased it last year, meaning increased the second tier as far as how much they were. Well, in 2010, it, the rate was like three something bolivar to a U.S. dollar, mm -hmm. and on the first tier for essential, and then non-essential was something else. So it got increased up so to they the both six. Went up. Yes, I see. So you know you can share your thoughts here on this, but there's other stuff to talk about here tonight, including uh, Daryl. You've got actually a nice story about I a, do a restaurant in Oklahoma. That did something, you know, surprising and really, really nice for some of the hum the hungry homeless folks uh, in the area. So we can we can get to that story on the way here tonight. Uh, plus, there's other news about a unique radio station that has started in Colorado, which of course is one of the few states in the United States that has legalized marijuana. And now apparently there is actually a radio station that is dedicated to marijuana. And it doesn't appear, at least at this point, it doesn't appear to be a stunt. This may be a legitimate change of uh, of frequency, a, t a change of format. Change of format. It may, it may be a stunt. I would say there's a chance it could be, it could be a stunt. But uh, I listened a little bit to the station today just to kind of get a feel for Isn't it. Isn't everything really a stunt, or at least at the very least, a gimmick? What kind of music are they playing? Did you get any sense of that when it you listened to it? It appears to be a talk radio station. Oh, so it's talk radio, not any sort of like yeah, you would Grateful expect, Dead or anything right, like that? Bob Marley <laughs> or the Grateful Dead or something like that. Um, at least I didn't hear any music when I sampled gotcha. the station. Okay. We'll come back with more here in moments. The story out of uh, Oklahoma with the generous restaurateur, that's coming up. You can also share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Indefinite extension of the human lifespan is coming. But is it coming soon enough for you and me? That's the $80,000 question. I say $80,000 because that's what it costs to have your head cryonically frozen by Alcor. I've committed to do it. I got a life insurance policy, and I made them the uh, beneficiaries. Bam, my best shot at living forever. Interested? Contact them at Alcor.org. A-L-C-O-R dot O-R-G. Mention my name, and I get a free year of membership. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, April 17th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.41 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,205 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $225. Antiwar.com reports Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Martin Dempsey sought to downplay the impact of Russia removing a long-standing ban on selling S-300 defense missiles to Iran, saying the U.S. option to attack Iran remains intact. The S-300 was the cream of the crop of the 1980s Soviet long-range anti-aircraft system, something Iran has sought for years because of constant threats by both the U.S. and Israel to attack. The S-300 has never actually been used in combat anywhere, but is still considered a high-end defense system. It should be noted that the Russian removal of the ban does not mean Iran will actually purchase the weapon or that delivery is imminent, as since losing the contract in 2010, Iran has developed some more elaborate internal defense systems. No air defense system is absolute at any rate, so General Dempsey is correct in that it doesn't prevent the U.S. from unilaterally attacking Iran if it wants, but it does increase the risk of losing one or more warplanes in such an attack. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports WikiLeaks on Thursday published thousands of emails and documents leaked after Sony Pictures was hacked last year, a move the film company has condemned. WikiLeaks announced it has published a searchable database of 30,287 documents and 173,132 emails from more than 2,200 email addresses from Sony Pictures Entertainment. The documents were leaked after hackers broke into Sony's server in December. The U.S. government said North Korean hackers executed the attack in retaliation for the release of the comedy film The Interview, which poked fun at the country. WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange said the leaked documents should be in the public domain because of Sony's links to a number of government organizations. Assange said, This archive shows the inner workings of an influential multinational corporation. It is newsworthy and at the center of a geopolitical conflict. It belongs in the public domain. WikiLeaks will ensure that it stays there. Sony Pictures condemned the move, saying that by publishing the documents, WikiLeaks is assisting cyber criminals. When her plush and comfy life suddenly and unexpectedly fell apart, Brooke and her dog Cloud set out to defy the odds. If this is a man's world, as they say, living on the streets is no place for a young woman. One day she awoke in the Redwood Forest and realized she had become a hobo and would ultimately come to know exactly what it means to survive. How to Be a Hobo by Brooke Willett is available from Amazon.com and all major bookstores. Reuters reports a Florida man who caused a major security scare after landing a small helicopter on the west lawn of the U.S. Capitol was charged with two criminal offenses on Thursday and then released pending trial. Douglas Mark Hughes, a U.S. Postal Service mail carrier, faces up to four years in prison on charges of unlawfully operating an unregistered aircraft and violating national defense airspace. Hughes was arrested Wednesday afternoon after he flew his gyrocopter over Washington and landed on the Capitol grounds. Aircraft are banned from flying in the area of the Capitol and the White House without permission. 
At the hearing in the U.S. District Court for the District of Columbia, Hughes was still dressed in his blue Postal Service jacket and used hearing aid headphones. Hughes told the Tampa Bay Times before his trip that he planned to deliver letters to members of Congress to draw attention to the need for campaign finance reform. Magistrate Judge Deborah Robinson said Hughes of Ruskin, Florida, was free to return to his home, but once he was there, he would be subject to home detention. He is also barred from operating any aircraft and must stay away from the U.S. Capitol and White House areas in Washington, surrender his expired passport, and report once a week to a pretrial office in Tampa. The U.S. government did not oppose his release, and Hughes is due back in Washington for a preliminary hearing on May 8th. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. In a statement this week, famed actor and television icon Dick Van Dyke confessed to being the Zodiac Killer, responsible for terrorizing Northern California in the late 1960s and early 1970s. The 85-year-old actor, known for his television and film appearances in classics such as Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Mary Poppins, and The Dick Van Dyke Show, said he committed the Zodiac murders but also killed over 37 additional people. Van Dyke said, quote, It was unbelievably easy for me to go kill someone, come back to Burbank, and get on set. It was actually part of the fun to see if I could book a flight and make it back in time. Van Dyke's confession is corroborated by several eyewitnesses describing the Zodiac Killer as, quote, a gangly, loose-limbed man with a toothy grin and a spring in his step. In other news, the open dialogue two Americans are having about race is pretty hilarious. A husband is experimenting with an open marriage, and a f***ing loser is at a movie all by himself. This episode of The Onion Week in Review was paid for, funded, and entirely created by The Onion, and in no way benefited from cheap, thankless viewers like you. For more, keep checking TheOnion.com. Free Talk Live, you can dial toll-free here at 855-450-FREE as we launch into the third hour of the program here. 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio tonight, Ian. Danica. And Daryl. And we've got a different kind of a story here, a a positive story. Daryl, you wanted to share with us. Yeah, so this story happened uh, about a week ago. The story here comes from KFOR News 4 in Oklahoma. The story is out of War Acres, Oklahoma. A metro restaurant is opening their doors to someone many turn away. Hmm. The owner of PB Jams in War Acres recently noticed someone had been rummaging through their trash, specifically food containers. She says it broke her heart to know someone was so down on their luck that they would be digging through her trash. So, rather than ignore it, she decided to help the person out. Ashley Jaron, the owner of PB Jams, said, Last week I noticed some bags when I had taken out the trash were torn open. Some of the food was taken out. Hmm. She simply could not ignore what she saw. She says, It really hurt me that someone had to do that. So she put a sign on the dumpster and at the front door, telling whomever was eating from her trash, that they are a human being and worth more than a meal from a dumpster. The sign goes on to say that the person is welcome to come in to the sandwich shop for a meal, free of charge, no questions asked. She says, I will not take down the sign until they come in. Wow. She says that she knows that pride may keep the person away. However, she is hoping that they will take her up on the offer. I mean, how proud can you be if you're digging through a dumpster? Yeah. I mean, I guess I can understand the, the claim that that might that the person may not want to be known as far as who they are, and so they won't won't want to come in and announce it uh, to the staff of the restaurant. But you know, how unlikely is it that they're going to be seen back there? I mean, they're likely somebody's going to spot them in that dumpster, and then there's a chance. Not they might necessarily, but be- because a, a lot of people, and I've learned a lot about hobos about dumpster diving because I published a book about hobos right. it was written by a friend of mine who was a hobo for four years this is your newest book right Over uh, FPP.cc? yes uh the book is titled how to be a hobo right and it talks about some of the ways to get food and dumpster diving is one and generally if you're going to dumpster dive you're going to wait until it's dark mm-hmm. and there's no one around you're not dumpster diving in the middle of the day really okay you're going to dumpster dive at night is that because it's illegal or just because they don't want to be seen Mostly because it's illegal. Is it? Yes. Because it's trespassing. 
that's not true everywhere, right? Like, uh, like if you put your in some places, if you put your garbage out by the curb, it is now sort of public property. New right. Hampshire's not that way. But if, but, if you but in, in, in a lot of places, in a lot of places, they'll have the dumpster sort of enclosed, right, to where people can't just get into it. And if you're digging in one of those dumpsters, you're definitely trespassing. Mm. It's definitely illegal. So, yeah, if it's one of these things to where the dumpster is in plain sight in a back alley somewhere, mm-hmm. then, you know, better chance you'll get away with it. But it's not because people don't necessarily want to be seen, because a lot of times you'll see people with signs sure. saying, you know, like, give me I'm money hungry. or I'm hungry, we'll work for food, whatever. I want beer. And I've actually seen that sign as well. Yeah, I'll give him credit for being honest. Yeah. And why what- I want a beer. One thing that was written in the book by Brooke was there are some restaurants where you can go in and ask for the hobo special. Really? What? And they will give you because get you some scraps or something. McDonald's, <laughs> Wendy's, other fast food places, if someone gets the wrong burger, like mm-hmm. say you go in, you get a burger, you ask for, you know, extra pickles and no onions. And they screw it up. And they screw it up, they have to throw that away. Right. If a hobo comes in or some other bum, because there is a difference between a hobo and a bum, I'll explain that yeah, in a I second. Yeah, I want to hear that one. Yeah. Uh, but if one of those people comes in and says, do you have a hobo special, they will give them that burger that you just gave back because it wasn't what you ordered. And, and are you saying that a place like McDonald's, like one of those big chains, will do that? Or is it more of like a mom and they pop will. thing? Sometimes mom and pop. Uh, Certain Mexican restaurants generally are better about that because huh. Mexicans are big on family. Oh yeah. Very Chinese true. restaurants will run you off. Oh. Even though they're pretty big. The, in the buffet, family. they are, but they're big on people taking care of themselves. Yeah. They don't take care of bums. Hmm. So if you go, even though you know Chinese buffets throw out more food than any other restaurant you can think of, they will run you off. Uh, something else that she said is a lot of times a subway worker will As have in subway you, sandwiches. Subway sandwich will say, "Take out the trash, sweep the floors. I'll give you my shift meal." Wow! Because subway workers get one free sandwich per shift. Okay. If you've worked there long enough, you don't want to eat the sandwich because you're tired, you're tired of the of food. It. Sure. Right. So sometimes somebody that works at a subway restaurant will give their interesting food to a bum or a hobo. And, and you learn all of this in her book. Yes. Which is called what? How to be a hobo. And it's available at fpp.cc as well as Also available books. Amazon, all major bookstores, nice. and soon it will be available as an audiobook. Who's so, reading it? Uh, Angel Clark did the narration. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, cool. Uh, so the difference between a hobo and a bum. Yeah. Hobos travel around. I see. Hobos don't stay in the same place. All right. A bum will stay in the same place mm. for a long time. As long as possible. Kind as of. long as possible. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of times people will just see somebody that's homeless and say, oh, he's a hobo. But an actual hobo will get offended if you if they hear you call that's a bum a hobo. Is the hobo, do they feel as though they are better than the bums? Not necessarily better, but different. <laughs> it's just a different word. Come on. That's no, interesting. Th- but because, you know... Th- they they're both homeless. Are they the both as likely to be is, alcoholics and have drug problems? Uh, that she didn't really get into, but she does talk about drug use and mm-hmm. alcohol, and the gener the generosity of people, because a lot of times people don't want to see somebody living on the streets. Sure, she writes about uh, I forget where she was, but she's sitting outside of a restaurant playing her ukulele and somebody comes and like what are you doing here well i'm waiting on food and you know trying to make some money and just went home and brought a bunch of stuff and like here's a tent and here's some blankets yeah, sure. and here's extra clothes and this and she said it took her four trips to take it all to the pawn shop across the street to get rid of it because <laughs> she, she didn't want things. Yeah, you can't use that stuff. I yeah, mean, she well, th- there are some hobos that are gearless. 
Yeah. Meaning that they have nothing other than they might have, you know, like a multi tool sleep when they can. That kind of thing. A toothbrush. Yeah. And that's about it. Or have everything just consistently packed into a backpack and they can't take well, those well, no, those, those those are not gearless. The people that are gearless, all they have is maybe a toothbrush and a multi tool. Interesting. Right. And that's all they want. They don't want to have things because things right. tie you down. They things certainly do. slow that's true. you down. They're so, a burden in a lot of ways. Yeah. We all have way too many things in our lives. I mean, I think I can, I feel comfortable making that statement. Um, <laughs> not We're not hoarders necessarily, but that's that's the direction things take you, right? Like, you can go from totally simplified, like these gearless hobos who have next to nothing, all the way up to the hoarder who has one of everything, if not a hundred of everything, including pieces of garbage uh, in their home. Most of us want to find a happy medium between the the two extremes. Yes. But I have a lot more appreciation for the people who can live with nothing than I do for the people who just accumulate, accumulate, and accumulate. Have you even seen an episode of Hoarders? Oh my God, yes. It's Does one it of my make you just want to just uh, it makes scrub me down clean. your house? Yeah. yeah. Does it do the same for you? Yeah, same. I'm just like, oh, okay. I'm I've not never that seen bad. it. Get out of here. Now, you must have met a, a pack rat or a hoarder at some point in your oh, life. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, if, you, if you've seen it in real life. When, then... when my grandmother would clean her house, she would move piles of stuff from oh, one room man. to another. Oh, of course. It's so sad. Yeah, it, you got to see hoarders. I mean, if you like good kind of documentary style reality TV shows, uh, this really gets into the realm of disgusting and horrifying and hilarious, uh, sort of sadly hilarious all at the same time, because it is a, a serious illness. 855 450 free. More coming up on Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sidkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now, I'm giving this book away for free. So, who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-5836. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-5836. 1-800-944-5836. Gold. It's like nothing else on Earth. From the Romans through the Renaissance, from the Industrial Age to the Space Age, gold has weathered the test of time. For 6,000 years, gold has remained the ultimate store of wealth. According to the World Gold Council and the U.S. Mint, demand is at an all-time high. The stage is being set for the re-emergence of gold as the common-sense alternative to a fiat paper currency that gets weaker every day. Midas Resources is proud to offer the hard-hitting report that arms you with the truth you need to protect you and your family from the Fed's plans for your hard-earned money. Don't gamble with your future. Call Midas Resources today and ask for your free copy of As Good As Gold. Call 1-800-686-2237 for the report the Fed hopes you'll never see. As Good As Gold can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. If you have ever thought about owning gold, you must read this report. Call Midas today at 800-686-2237. This is a national health care alert from the Health Hotline. If you, a family member, or a loved one suffers from knee pain and have Medicare as your primary insurance, we've got great news. You could qualify for a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost to you. Get free delivery, and all the paperwork is handled by our accredited suppliers at no charge to you. So if you're on Medicare and have knee pain, don't wait. You may qualify to immediately receive a pain-relieving knee brace at little or no cost. Friendly agents are standing by 24-7 to help you. We also have other pain relieving braces too for your shoulder, ankle, or back. You may be eligible to get these items and more at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Our friendly representatives are standing by now to help you, so please call now. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 800-301-2963. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. You may dial toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. And join us on the radio waves. Maybe you've been a hobo. Maybe you've been a bum. Maybe you still are. Uh, because, you know, we'd love to talk to you. Daryl, you've got a book. It's How to Be a Hobo. How to Be a Hobo, written by Brooke Willett. Uh, also known as Brooke Kelly. Known to many in the Liberty community as Brooke Kelly. She was the girl with a fairy wing. The truth fairy. Yeah. The truth fairy? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, you can actually see Brooke if you Google for uh, Pam, re-elect Pam Slack. If you look for those videos on YouTube, Brooke is actually in those videos. So she's been here in Keene. She's visited uh, Keene. She's visited New Hampshire, been to the Porcupine Freedom Festival. And then after a little while, she disappeared off the map. And apparently that was the time in her life where she was being a hobo. And there, there were uh, four years that she was on the road. Two of those years... She had no social media, no cell phone, mm. basically no the, contact. The first two or the last two? The last two. So she totally in, uh, immersed herself in, yes. this, in this world, into this community. Got rid of her car, started hopping freight. freight she trains. talks about hopping freight and riding freight trains. You know Some of the things, if you're going to do it, things that you need to know. And she says, like, you know, don't take this as any kind of manual to tell you how to do it. Don't go jump on a freight train because you read this book. Yeah. Don't give up your entire life to go live on the streets because you read this book. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's basically, it's her memoirs hmm. of those years as a hobo. So she doesn't really recommend it? No, she doesn't recommend it to anyone okay. unless... Their situation is so dire that they are thrust into the position. Yeah. Yeah, I can't say that being a hobo is a very glamorous position, but, I mean, what can you do when you're thrust in those kinds of circumstances? Well, some people choose it. I mean, some people... Some people do. Right. Some people are thrust into circumstances. They lost their house. They lost their sure, job. Sure, you know. if something happens, but choosing to do it, I mean... Some people choose it because they want to get rid of the trappings of life. They want okay, to... Good point. Uh, they want to escape from the responsibilities of things like rent and all these obligations that people have. When you are, you know, transient like that, you, your life is a completely different thing. I mean, you don't have the same responsibilities. In fact, you could argue you don't have any responsibilities at all. I mean, I'm sure you could probably find some, like if, you know, hobos agree to one another to do certain things or to help each other out. I imagine there are individual kind of responsibilities but the classic responsibilities that we're used to like paying bills or showing Going up to work to work on time uh you know a, a hobo could take temporary positions i imagine yes and she even talks about some of that mm -hmm. such as there's something called woofing Tell which is that. the world organic something farming so ba pot. basically uh well that that would be something different. Yeah, okay. Uh, but she does talk about that to where, you know, like during trim season, you, go and work you on could a go farm. work on a pot farm, trimming stuff. Uh, but the woofing is where you take basically a short-term job working for a farmer. So like harvesting in the field. Harvesting, like tilling, planting, whatever day time labor. of year. Yeah. Day labor sort of stuff, but 
the woofing is a little bit lo- more long-term commitment than just a day. So it would be gotcha. from, say, the start of the farming season to the er- end then. Yeah. Possibly, or okay. it could just be planting season or harvest season. And usually gotcha. in res- in return for the work, you get a place to stay and some small you, stipend, right? Uh, you might get a small stipend. You might just get a place to Food. stay and fed Okay, and a place to shower. Right. Uh, there's also some RV parks where you can agree to basically check in guests hmm. in exchange for a free night. Not bad. And th- cool. there's other things, and she talks a little bit about some of those. It reminds me, and I know I've said this before, so I'll keep the comment short, but it reminds me of Peace Pilgrim, uh, what or kind of her experience where Peace Pilgrim made the choice to go on the road and took only a toothbrush. She had a like sort of a an apron or a smock of some sort with like a couple pockets on it. And she had a toothbrush and a few little pamphlets that had her philosophy, which was very based on simplicity. I don't know if she was a Quaker. Uh, I don't recall, but she had some sort of Quaker-esque uh, religion. And she walked literally across the country for decades, like for... <laughs> For 20 or 30 years. Wow. And, and she, because she didn't have anything with her, she was essentially, she was not expecting necessarily, but it would happen so consistently that everything that she had as far as feeding herself came from the generosity of other people. Mm. So every food, every uh, meal she ever ate while she was on the road, every, every roof under which she ever slept uh, was donated to her by the people who came across her, just the the people that she met naturally by walking across the country were the people who su- sustained her. And she never had to ask, right? Like it was just something where people would offer her a meal or they'd offer her a place to stay. And of all of the years that she spent doing that, she said it was only a handful of times where she ever had to, you know, like curl underneath an overpass or something like that. That almost almost every night she had a roof over her head and she had food in her belly just from the kindness of, of people. It's an amazing story. Yep. Cool. So there, there's a little bit more to yeah, the sure. story out of Oklahoma. This is where the restaurateur offered a free meal to the homeless, whoever it was that was dumpster diving. Yes. Uh, she put a sign up on the dumpster and one on the front door of the okay. restaurant. She says, I think we've all been in the position where we needed someone's help and we just needed someone to extend that hand. And if I can be that one person to extend that hand to another human, I will definitely do it. The awesome. restaurant has only been open for a few months, and she says despite that, last week was the first time she ever noticed that someone had gone through the trash. Now, let me read the letter. Okay. It says, to the person going through our trash for their next meal, you're a human being and worth more than a meal from a dumpster. Please come in during operating hours for a classic pb and fresh veggies, and a cup of water at no charge. No questions asked. That's awesome. And isn't the name of the place PB something or other? It's PB like... and Jam. Okay, yeah. So I want to PB Jam. Right. When PB I heard jam. the name of the place, I thought they sell peanut butter and jelly. Yes. And it sounds like they do. Or in this case, give it away. If you're homeless yeah. or if you claim to be. Right. So the question that I have about this. Yeah. Would you patronize a restaurant that had a sign that said, we will feed homeless for free? Sure. Why not? Well, there are some people that that wouldn't because they don't want to be around homeless people. Right. Because they think that they are better than homeless people. I said I would have no problem visiting a facility like that. I think that's great that she's going out of her way. No one's forcing her to do that. She just she feels sorry for the person and she understands what it's like to be in a terrible maybe not or at the very least she doesn't want to be in that situation right right? she 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 empathizes she might not be able to sympathize but she empathizes yeah and you're going to keep the snooty people out right so if it's a bunch of people who are like i don't want to eat any of the homeless well well, i don't think snooty people are really going to go to a pb&j place place to begin with but yeah gourmet pb&j probably isn't going to fly in the snooty community probably not but do you think that more restaurants should publicize this sort of thing? Publicize as in a sign on the dumpster or as in beyond that? Like sign on the dumpster saying, you know, or sign on the front door because she's got one in both places. Yeah. Saying if you're eating out of my trash, come in, I'll give you a meal. That seems like the most appropriate thing to do. I mean, that's the way to reach the person or the people in this case. Putting a TV ad out wouldn't really do anything besides right. toot her own horn. Uh, more coming up here, 855-450-free. 
is the toll-free number. You can share your thoughts. It's Free Talk Live. Positive results from satisfied customers of heart and body extract continue to pour into our website, hbextract.com. This is Al from New Jersey. One day I saw your ad for heart and body extract, and it mentioned that it would help me with angina, so I decided to order. I figure I had nothing to lose. Heart and body extract supplies your body with everything it needs to balance itself and maintain optimal heart and circulatory health with no negative side effects. I took the formula three times a day as directed, and I kid you not, within four days, my angina pain was completely gone. Order HB Extract by calling 866-295-5305 or online at hbextract.com. That's 866-295-5305 or hbextract.com. I could not believe it actually stopped the pain. Heart and body extract actually works. This is just an amazing product. Even the numbness in my hands is completely gone. Heart and body extract for a long and healthy life. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of a purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. You may dial toll-free to join us here at 855-450-FREE. Your thoughts on the restaurateur who is uh, inviting homeless people, hungry people, whoever it was that was digging through her dumpster or whoever is willing to claim they are hungry and were digging through the dumpster, to a free meal, a free peanut butter and jelly sandwich, some uh, veggies, and what was the drink? Glass of water. Glass of water. No questions asked. Right. Pretty A pretty awesome deal. Your question, though, Daryl, was you, the listener, how do you feel about this as a potential customer or customer of that business? Uh, would that 
you know, make you less or more likely to patronize the business? Do you have no opinion about it? Uh, how does it make you feel? Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We're going to go to your calls and thoughts. But first, I want to tell you about ProXPN. It is a great way to protect your privacy online. You can go to ProXPN.com slash FTL, download their software for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android devices, even Linux. And uh, once you connect to ProXPN, your internet service provider will no longer know what you're doing online. They're probably saving your surfing history right now, maybe even selling that information or perhaps giving it away to governments. You can stop that from happening by encrypting your data through ProXPN. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. And when you're ready to sign up for their premium account and get access to unlimited bandwidth servers around the world private torrenting ability, plus get past regionally blocked websites. Use code FTL50 to save 50% off the price of their annual account. That's code FTL50 at proxpn.com slash FTL. It's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. And ProXPN does not keep records of your online habits at all. So pretty cool stuff. Go to proxpn.com slash FTL. And don't forget code FTL50. Let's go to Steve listening in St. Louis. Steve, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian Danica and Daryl. Hey, guys. Hi, How's Steve. it going? Good. What's on your mind tonight? Well, I had something to add. Um, you were talking about dumpster divers. Uh, I worked for the last, well, 12 years, um, and I would hire homeless people. So I've seen, I've been in and out of every single homeless shelter, like, within the Midwest, like, almost all of it. And I hired this guy one time, and he, they were holding signs, basically, for going out of business sales. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and that my responsibility was to hire them and get them to hold signs. It's an easy job. You know, a certain lo- yeah, easy. Unless it's freezing cold yeah. or super hot. But otherwise, it's pretty yeah, simple. It's exactly. a simple job, I guess we should. I should say. I don't. I don't uh, envy the people with those jobs because, uh, yeah. at least in New England, it looks awful during the winter time. And depending on you know if these were bums or hobos, they might be used to standing out holding a sign anyway. Sure. Yeah. They're used so to you know, <laughs> good job. It, it's something that they're doing, and they're getting paid for doing what they would normally do. They're just holding a different sign. All they have to do is show up on time. So, Steve, what was your experience? So, I have to keep an eye on them because I'm managing them, and this guy's gone from his post. So I'm looking for him. You know, you know, looking around checking all the different restaurants and everything. And I drive around this back of this restaurant and the guy is, he pops up and he's literally in the back of a dumpster. Is he in a, no, just a question. A lot of these sign holders will be in a costume of some sort. So there's like up here. No. There's this, no. Okay. So he's just in his regular clothes. I was going to say it would look yeah, really bad if he was in the that, work yeah. costume. Oh yeah. That'd be terrible. Digging through the dumpster. <laughs> Up here, there's a there's a, a business called Liberty Tax Service. They're nationwide, which, Ian. Okay. Well, anyway, they um, I've noticed them up here, and they have a Statue of Liberty costume that they have someone wear on the side of the road, and I just thought it'd be funny if yeah, somebody we, was wearing that while digging through a dumpster. Yeah, we have those as well here gotcha. in St. Louis. Yeah. All right, so you caught him in the dumpster, but then this what? Guy, this guy just popped out of the dumpster I'm, I'm driving around looking for him and he just popped out of the dumpster <laughs> eating something so he's on a lunch break what are you doing <laughs> <laughs> like get back out there like what do you so what why? did he say what did he have to say for himself he was like i was just hungry i'm like damn dude i'll buy you something <laughs> i'll buy you lunch like all you have to do is ask. Well, and was that one of those situations where it was like he was too proud to ask for help, but not too proud to crawl I in guess. a dumpster? I guess so. Thanks for sharing your story tonight, Steve. Anything else you want to share? Yeah, no problem. Appreciate the call. Um, No, that's about it. All right. Thanks for making the call. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. You may join us here. Maybe you've had experience hiring homeless people. My mom runs a thrift store in uh, Florida. And she works in downtown Sarasota. Oh. And 
she encounters her share of homeless people, not just who want to come in and use the bathroom, which, of course, is closed off to homeless people unless they're actual paying customers mm-hmm. of the store because the homeless guys will go in and pee all over the place. Um, and that's the reason they closed the bathroom to non-customers. And that was done years ago. But she has hired a lot of homeless guys. Uh, probably, I don't know if any homeless gals really, but mostly guys, homeless guys to work at the store. It's a thrift store, so there's a lot of furniture and stuff that needs to get moved around, trucks to be unloaded, you know, manual labor kind of stuff. And her experiences have been mixed uh, with hiring homeless people that uh, sometimes you can find some that are actually really reliable and they have a good work ethic. Uh, and then even though they've been reliable and have a good work ethic, at some point they might fall off the wagon uh, and, you know, become drunks and then completely change their uh, their attitude and their willingness to show up on time. So it's sort of a it's a bit of a roller coaster ride from my uh, conversations with my mom about, you know, what it's been like hiring these. Guys. But it's really a roller coaster when you're hiring anyone. True. Because you never know when somebody might just be an alcoholic, but they happen to have an apartment. Yeah, that's a good point. Very true. Although, you know, hiring homeless guys, I think has more often than not be- been a troublesome thing for her, right. her experience. Because a lot of them aren't on the street by choice. A lot of them are there because they can't manage their money or they can't manage their addictions, substance abuse, etc. I don't know what percentage of homeless people are there by choice, but I imagine it's less than 5% or less than, less than 10%. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a very small percentage. But there, there's also people that are homeless because... They've got different mental disorders. Yep. There are some people that are homeless because, you know, they just hit a string of bad luck and they're trying to get their life straightened out right. and they can't seem to catch a break. So, you know, there, there's really a lot of reasons why people are homeless. That's why I'm more inclined as someone who does support local homeless help kind of charitable efforts. I'm more inclined to support the local privately run homeless shelter rather than give a homeless guy five bucks. Sure. Because the shelter is, at least here in Keene, there's one called 100 Nights. There's the government funded shelters, and then there's the privately, mostly privately funded ones that I believe they're trying to take some government money or might have gotten a small amount, but it is still, for the super majority part, privately funded. Uh, they, you know, they provide a, a place for people to sleep on the hundred coldest nights of the year, and all year long they do provide uh, sort of a resource center where homeless and down on their luck people can come in and they can look at job postings and they can get get help with a resume and use a computer, you know, that kind of thing, real basic stuff. But important stuff for the ones who really do want to kind of get back on their feet and become productive again. And I support, you know, charitable efforts that support folks like that. Yeah, not absolutely. Just, not just pure handouts. And then like but, the, the local soup kitchen, even though the local soup kitchen kind of is a handout. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Because anybody can go in to get a meal. Yeah. But at least it's giving someone food instead of giving them, here's $5. Cash, right. right go buy food with this, and they're like, ah, no, I'm going to go buy cigarettes. And that's what I was always told. If you have to help someone who's standing out in the street holding up a sign, bring them food because at least you know that it's going to keep them fed and give them energy, whereas, like you said, a dollar or five or ten or whatever – goes to drugs, alcohol, does not help yeah, and if their they ref- situation. If they refuse the food, then that's a good sign that yeah. they, uh, right. they don't need it. Yeah, that's a very good sign. If they wanted alcohol. Our or they might need the food. They just don't want the food. They would rather have other things. Yeah. Right. Toll-free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. You may share your thoughts here in the remaining moments. Coming up, a new radio station has gone on the air in Colorado Springs. We're not on it yet, but uh, it's all about marijuana. I don't, know if, I don't know if we would even qualify. It's Free Talk Live. More coming up. New Hampshire is under quarantine as walking corpses devour the flesh of the living. Max is 11 years old and surviving alone. Slow moving and non thinking, the dead swarm his home. Now he must apply his porcupine Freedom Scouts training to improvise his escape. Look for Survivor Max on Facebook, read reviews on Amazon, or read Chapter 1 at SurvivorMax.com. 
On Monday, Josh Liebarger made his status Case of the Mondays Followed by a frowny face It got one like and five comments, including Dislike Well, Josh, Geico also wants to make a comment To turn that emoji's frown upside down In just 15 minutes, you could save hundreds of dollars on your car insurance by switching to Geico With all that extra dough, why not give Monday a makeover? We see an office party in your future Hosted by you Hashtag happy face Hashtag savings Geico, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for $35,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet for $35,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Call 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year's keynote speeches and panels will be announced via the Keenvention blog and Facebook, so stay tuned there for the latest. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keene for Keenvention this October 30th through November 1st. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $50 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $50 price only lasts through the end of June, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more and look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you may dial toll-free here and get on the radio with us at 855-450-FREE. We've got Skype, Skype usernames, lrn.fm. But if you're not on now, it's probably too late. If you are on now, we'll do our best to get you on the air. If you don't get on tonight, we're on seven nights a week. You can join us any old time you like over at freetalklive.com. Danica has stepped away from the third microphone to make room for a special last-minute guest. Uh, Kat Bleich is with us. Kat, welcome back to Free Talk Live. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, as always, it is uh, it is good to have you here. And you and John Bush, who we had on the show almost for half the pro- more than half the show last night, uh, you guys are kicking off the Bitcoin bus tour. Yes, we're kicking off right here, basically. Kicking it off from New Hampshire. The bus is going to the shop tomorrow morning for some last-minute kind of checks and tweaks and tune-ups, and then you guys are going to be hitting the road tomorrow. Is that yes, right? Yes, tomorrow. We're going to be staying the night in New York City tomorrow. And tonight is actually our first night sleeping in, in the Bitcoin the bus. bus. Now, is the uh, New York thing, is there a conference going on there? What's going on? No, there's not City? a conference. We're just going to be meeting up with some of our friends. 
And then you're going to go south. Yes, we're there. headed to Asheville after that, and we're mm-hmm. going to spend several days there. There's going to be a Bitcoin meetup. There's going to be a little unschool meetup. We're going to get some work done with Justin and Shayla of the Blue Ridge Liberty Project. And then we're going to head to see my parents in Kansas City. Okay. And then to Houston, and then back to Austin. Uncoinventional.com is the website where you guys are going to be chronicling uh, things that are happening. Plus, you'll be podcasting, what, every other day, I think, something like that? Yes, we're doing daily podcasts, but we're combining them into an every other day feed. Uh-huh. So you'll hear two days at a time every other day. And the Bitcoin bus used to be the unschool bus. That's right. So I don't know if John discussed this last night. I certainly didn't hear the story. So how did the unschool bus become the Bitcoin bus? Well, actually, I posted on Facebook asking if anyone had lived in an RV with a family before because John and I were trying to downgrade our life and redesign our lifestyle, basically. And this long, epic conversation started on the thread, on the post. And essentially, Kelly, who was the former owner, was involved in the thread and she PM'd me and was like, you know, maybe we'll give you the bus. I and thought, give me the bus. Oh, my gosh. Y'all had met previously, I We presume, met at Pork, at Pork Fest, Fest a couple of years ago, and they actually gave my daughter a travel hula hoop mm. that she used for several years until she broke it. That must have been a sad day. It was a sad day. <laughs> so, but uh, this is a, another uh, Pork Fest success story, right? Like, uh, I mean, you make connections for a lifetime that you don't necessarily even know how relevant and important they're going to be until years later. Yes. Pork Fest. I mean, seriously, Pork Fest has changed my life in so many ways. I could spend an hour talking about just that, you yeah, know, sure. but, um, you know, I, I figured out I was an anarchist on stage during Soapbox Idol at Pork Fest. I was just giving a rant and then I realized I'm a mother effing <laughs> Thank you anarchist, you know, and I just say like it came to Ooh. me and I realized it, you know, that I don't need a leader. I'm my own leader. And you're, uh, you're wearing one of your sponsors' T-shirts here, CheapAir.com. Yes, we love CheapAir. LRN.FM is sponsoring. You guys have got the uh, the banners applied, sort of these nice side graphics on the sides yes, of the Bitcoin bus. Thank you for helping facilitate that. It would not have helped. It would not have happened without your help. It was difficult, actually. It was a lot more work than I expected it to be, given that the first guy we tried to use, his computers failed, and we'd spent all this time sending him these graphics, and then we had to redo them to send them to this other place, and... <laughs> But we made it happen, and they actually look really great. They look amazing. You guys have some pictures I think you'll be posting at some point, so if people get to see it, they'll get a sneak peek before it maybe drives through where they happen to be. So you're coming in at the very end of uh, Free Talk Live here, and we've been talking about uh, homeless people and being homeless and helping homeless people and uh, this uh, con- uh, sort of this kitchen place or the restaurant. Uh, PB Jams in War Acres, Oklahoma. They had somebody dig through their dumpster the owner decided to put up a sign on the dumpster and the front door that says, if you're digging through my dumpster for food, come in and I will give you a meal. That's awesome. Yeah, pretty cool. So the question was, you know, how would you feel about a place that you might eat at making that decision? Because some people would turn their noses up at that. Other people would it make the it would probably endear them even further to the sort of mom and pop place uh, that we were discussing. So Ron is on the line in Tallahassee. Ron, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Daryl, and Kat Blesch. Hello, uh, Ron. Yeah. Hey, you're on the air. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, years ago, uh, about 40 years ago, I ran a shop when I was a student at FSU, and we worked on sports cars, and we just finished up a couple, and the shop was filthy. The guy walks in and says, have you got something I can do to uh, make a little money? I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, if you slip out the shop, I'll give you five bucks. Now, that was money back then. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, he got he got all through and did a good job. I gave him his five bucks. There was a liquor store at the end of the street. We were about, oh, maybe 200 feet from the, from the corner. There was a liquor store on the right. There was a restaurant down, just down the street. It was we walked down there every day and had lunch. And he got to the end of the street and he looked to the right and he looked to the left. <laughs> Saw the restaurant and a big sign. Looked to the right and I told him you look good and tell Gus I sent you. He'll fix you up good. You can get all you can eat and change too. Mm-hmm. And uh, you you can guess which one. He, he went right to the liquor store. The yep. 
but it was his money. It was he his money. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I mean, you know, you paid him. You can't tell him what he can do with the with the money at that point. But if you're going to buy him something for free, then you buy him the meal, right? That's his business, and he he didn't ask for a handout. He he, it was a legitimate deal. Did you ever see him again after that? No, never did. Must he have was, been a hobo. He was passing through. Yeah. All right, very good, Ron. Some people, some people go from town to town, fake a heart attack, get a ride to the hospital, stay there until they get all checked out, and they have their Obama phones. They call their friends. So, well, I'm in Tallahassee now, and uh, they treat me real good up here at this hospital. I got a special ride in an ambulance, and of course, you know, in a up the days he walks out and goes somewhere else. Wow, that's that's interesting. I never heard that one before, but it makes sense, right? You go check in at a hospital; they're going to feed you while you're in there. Yeah, and you they'll they'll walk, feed you, take care of you, make sure you're okay. Walk out on the bill. At that but point. will they buy you liquor? No, probably not. <laughs> no. Uh, Ron, thanks no. for the call tonight. But maybe they'll raid the uh, what is it that some bums like to go and get their hands on, uh, like mouthwash. They'll, they'll if it's. Uh, if, for instance, it's like a blue Sunday or something where they can't buy liquor or alcohol because of state rules, they'll go into Walgreens, you know, three in the morning, it's past alcohol sales time or whatever. They'll just buy some, you know, Listerine. Yeah. Drink that. Yummy. Yeah. Let's go to Abel. He's on the line. Abel, you're with us via Skype from New Hampshire, I presume? Yeah. Hey. Absolutely. Go ahead, sir. Good to talk to you guys. Thanks for taking my call. Yeah. I, um, uh, just the idea of, you know, going ahead and taking the peanut butter sandwich is 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 a great thing, but you know, you know and a, a great offer and 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 everything. But but I think that there was something to the idea of people that are that are in this realm of of kind of on the the other side of the uh, you know the we're poor line. Uh, you know, some of them are very proud people, and and they they want to you know take advantage of duly uh, discarded uh, materials. I you know there's a the amount of food that gets thrown away. That's I, true. I, I I know someone who used to you know we have a Trader Joe's here in in uh, uh, Nashua, New Hampshire, and they uh, we we had one of our uh, free state people we knew uh, used to take a uh, his pickup truck down and and uh, the Trader Joe's would you know whenever that was out of date I mean it was all wrapped up this still, still good they just can't sell good. it they can't sell it they throw it in the, and I think they were deliberately offering it up basically to anyone who wanted to haul it away sure. at least then they didn't have to have their dumpster empty quite as often well I know and that's I, one I mean, of the things the local food bank does is they'll or not food bank but the local community kitchen is they'll get donations of like you know pastries from Panera bread you know, stuff that they can't use after a certain yeah. period of time but they yeah, can still eat I, it I, and I think people you know want to choose that and want to take care of that resource and as as opposed to you know, having it just rot and some... Yeah, that's an interesting perspective, looking at it as going to waste otherwise. Thanks, Abel, for the call. Rollo is in Dallas, Texas. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Rollo. It's Rollo. Rollo. And, um, from, I'm from Dallas, Texas. All right. What's on your I mind wanted tonight? To speak a, I wanted to just speak a little bit about uh, isolationism. Ooh, you know, I'd love that. Uh, but unfortunately, Rollo, you've called at the very end of the program tonight, as apparently everyone wow. decided to do. Uh, but okay. if you want to call us tomorrow, because we can't address isolationism in a 20-second soundbite. That's just not going to yeah, work. Sure, sure. I don't sure. want to lead you on or anything like that. I want to give you time to talk about this. So if you call tomorrow night, now Saturday is one of our busiest nights on Free Talk Live, so you'll have to call at the very beginning of the show, which if you're in Texas will be 6 o'clock Central Time. Give us a call then, and we'll open the show up and talk about isolationism. I think it would be a very interesting topic for a Saturday night. So please do that, Rollo, if you can. If not Saturday night, call any night of the week, but just call earlier than the very final segment. And so thanks for the call tonight. We'll see you tomorrow online in the meantime. And check out uncoinventional.com for more of Cat Bleich. This is the Onion Week in Review. Quiet and reserved temp Kevin Bright surprised his co-workers this week when they discovered that the mild-mannered 27-year-old was actually an untalented singer-songwriter. How did I get here? It's probably a dream. 
Bright, who mostly keeps to himself at work, usually spends his free time embarrassing himself at open mics across the city, and that underneath his meek and soft-spoken exterior is a terrible guitarist with no musical sensibility whatsoever. You see him in the office, he's this quiet, reserved kid, and you would never think, oh, he's got a great voice and a wonderful stage presence, and you'd be totally right. In other news, an Ohio Film Festival graphic designer decides to go with film reels for the O's. And getting Grandma into a family reunion t-shirt is a three-person job. The entire 144-minute cut of this week's review is available now for just $11.99 on Laserdisc. For more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. This is the Onion News Network. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Nestle Pure Life Water, helping you drink better and live better by providing a zero-calorie alternative to sugary drinks. Visit us at nestle-purelife.us. When kids are playing, they often don't want to stop to keep hydrated, so send them out with a bottle of water and encourage them to take frequent drink breaks or call them inside for a quick sip. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, April 17th, 2015. Silver is trading at $16.41 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,205 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $225. Antiwar.com reports Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Martin Dempsey sought to downplay the impact of Russia removing a long-standing ban on selling S-300 defense missiles to Iran, saying the U.S. option to attack Iran remains intact. The S-300 was the cream of the crop of the 1980s Soviet long-range anti-aircraft system, something Iran has sought for years because of constant threats by both the U.S. and Israel to attack. The S-300 has never actually been used in combat anywhere, but is still considered a high-end defense system. It should be noted that the Russian removal of the ban does not mean Iran will actually purchase the weapon or that delivery is imminent, as since losing the contract in 2010, Iran has developed some more elaborate internal defense systems. No air defense system is absolute at any rate, so General Dempsey is correct in that it doesn't prevent the U.S. from unilaterally attacking Iran if it wants, but it does increase the risk of losing one or more warplanes in such an attack. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports WikiLeaks on Thursday published thousands of emails and documents leaked after Sony Pictures was hacked last year, a move the film company has condemned. WikiLeaks announced it has published a searchable database of 30,287 documents and 173,132 emails from more than 2,200 email addresses from Sony Pictures Entertainment. The documents were leaked after hackers broke into Sony's server in December. The U.S. government said North Korean hackers executed the 